Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. This actually happened to Deanne and I back in Newark, New Jersey about 10 years ago. I couldn't find my luggage at the airport baggage area. And I went to the lost luggage office and reported the loss. The woman there smiled and told me not to worry because she was a trained professional and said that I was in good hands. Now she asked, has your plane arrived yet? Dum, 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 dum. And they walk among us. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Come on, pledgers. Call, call, call. Oh, thank you very much, and welcome to Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, and our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. Big tire sale going on right now. And don't forget some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call, get on the route service, 734-6969. Right now, without further ado, let's go to the phone line for a Pledge of Allegiance person. Good morning. Good morning. Well, how are you, sunshine lady? I'm doing well, thank you, Zeb. You're welcome. May we have the pledge, please? Surely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Are we going to see and hear you tomorrow at Lunch Bunch? You know, Zeb, it's the one time I can't make it. I've got a conference I need to attend all day. Oh. I miss you guys. Well, we will miss you and your beautiful voice. Linda, God bless. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Zeb. You too. And I hope Lunch Bunch is awesome. All right. Thank you very much. What a nice, nice lady right there. Thank you very much. It is time for the weather. And the weather is brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. And, you know, here's some decorative mirrors that you can add instant light to your living space. Do you ever think about that? Oh, the room's kind of dark and dreary. Well, put some mirrors in there. Uh, used to make a small space feel a lot larger. Decorative mirrors can also be used in lieu of art to fill the empty wall spaces. There you go. A little tip from our friends at Genie Flooring and Home Design. 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for that blue door. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Let's take a look at the weather as we are moving and grooving through the work week. Looks like sunny skies for today. A little bit on the soft and breezy side, which is going to be nice. High of 76, overnight low of 46. Tomorrow going to be the best day. Mostly sunny skies. Winds out of the southeast right around 11 miles an hour. Expect a high of 80, overnight low of 47. Now, winds are picking up on Friday. Partly cloudy skies. Uh, winds out of the southeast right around 21 miles an hour. High of 80 with an overnight low of 56. Saturday, a complete game changer. 
Rain showers. It is going to be windy out of the southwest, right around 22 miles an hour. Only a high of 57 is what we're expecting for Saturday with an overnight low of 40. And then for Sunday, partly cloudy, windy, and 62. Yesterday's high was 70. The overnight low was 34. That is your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. Boy, I tell you, howdy. Good job, Gina. Thank you very much. Cheney Flooring and Home Design bringing you the weather. Whatever you need to make your house a home at Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Again, look for the blue door. Who is celebrating a birthday today? Well, happy, happy birthday and many, many more to a dear friend of this program and a dear friend of Magic Valley. He's done so much to help people uh, with the Modern Woodman and other projects. Thank you. And Jerry Voss, happy birthday today. You are a dear friend of this program. Happy, happy birthday. Um, let's see what else have I got cooking here this morning. I want to remind you about a Republican, let's see, the Cache County Forum Republican ticket. We'll have a meeting at the Burley High School Theater next Thursday, April 28th. And Doug Pickett sent this, Cache County Chairman for the Republican Party. And for additional information, call Doug Pickett at 300-3387. Attaboy, Doug. Thank you. All right, Denny's Restaurant. I want to get this in because somebody's going to call, sure as I'm sitting here, and they're going to say, when's lunch bunch? And the answer to that question is tomorrow at 11.30. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Yes, there's always tomorrow. At 611 Overland and Burley, Denny's Restaurant. Oh, my goodness sakes. Anytime, all the time, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, America's Diner. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Terry and everybody there at Denny's. And another location, too, 291 Pole Line in Twin Falls. Oh, yeah. We're going to be there for lunch bunch at 1130 tomorrow. Our thanks to Smith's Food, Hanson Mortuary, Walmart, Stokes Grocery. We appreciate their getting involved in the program of Zeb's Lunch Bunch and providing the gift certificates for the drawings. All of that tomorrow at Denny's Restaurant. You can stop in anytime at 611 Overland in Burley. Nice, nice people. Great food. Hmm, my. I look forward to it. Uh, don't forget, too, hello, Ramsey's. What's going on over at Ramsey Heating and Electric right now at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley? I can see Rita at her desk. Hi, Rita. Yep, smile. You're on camera. And then also I can see the rest of the folks that are scurrying around, getting everything all ready for the day. They have all your heating and electrical and cooling needs. And so, therefore, you better just give them a call or stop in, 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric. Open at 7.30 in the morning till 5, Monday through Friday. Yep, on Overland, Ramsey, Heating and Electric. Your turn, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Yeah, I can't believe this. Honestly, this really kind of slapped me upside the head yesterday. We receive a lot of mail. We receive a lot of junk mail. We receive a lot of magazines, many of which uh, we probably could do without, but different trade magazines in the horse business and Deanne with her flowers and her gardens. We get all kinds of magazines. Well, we got a magazine yesterday, and on the cover was America's Great. Girl Next Door, Sally Field. Yeah, remember Sally from The Flying Nun? And then also, you know, from Smokey and the Bandit fame and other motion pictures. And, uh, you know, she hasn't hardly changed a bit. And I really did not know how old she was. Holy cow! She's a couple of months older than I am. She's 69! 69, Sally Field, 69. And on the cover picture and on the inside, really, she hasn't hardly changed since she was in those movies with Burt Reynolds, Smokey and the Bandit. Holy cow, I know. Somebody out there saying, well, yeah, but she invested in a lot of makeup. I don't care. She still looks as vibrant and youthful as she did when she was back in those uh, heyday movies with Burt Reynolds. Cat, uh, Sally Field, 69. I could not believe it. 
Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I'll tell you one thing. You take my picture from when I was in high school, maybe a graduation picture. <laughs> then you compare it to now, and you're going to go, well, there's Gabby Hayes right there, my gully. I'll tell you what, I've changed a lot. I uh, want you to remember our dear friends at Minicasha Sales. We are, uh, well, quite frankly, right now I'm at a loss to find out what I did with the copy. But anyway, Minicasha Sales, I can fake my way through it because it's hard felt. Uh, I want to remind you about Zach and the rest of the crew serving you at Minicasha Sales. Absolutely, they sponsor Dr. History on Tuesdays, and uh, we really appreciate them. For all your building needs, all your lumber packages, everything, don't forget, stop in at Minicasha Sales, right across from the airport in Burley. There to serve you, Zach, and the rest of the crew, Minicasha Sales. And for the life of me, I can't find out what... Zach, I'm lost you. And uh, we're going to make sure that the lost is found here pretty quick. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zab. Yes, sir. I'm upset. Oh, dear. Some things never change. What's going on? Well... It seems the Dish Network is going to take about 18 of its channels off of the air. Uh huh. Now, I called them because there's a number to call them. And they said this is regulated by Viacom, which is, I guess they probably own the satellite. I believe, yeah. But they said that. Direct TV has to deal with the same company, and I, I told him, I said, "You raise mine. If you cut my channel off, I'm out of here." Well, what channel are you the most uh, upset about losing? Well, uh, TV Land. I like to watch Gunsmoke, uh-huh. Bonanza, and some of those other shows. Well, may I ask you, okay, you're talking about DirecTV. Why don't you think about switching over to Dish? I'm talking about Dish. Oh, I thought you said DirecTV. No, DirecTV is off of the same saddle. Ah, I see what you're saying. They're putting pressure on Dish to raise, you know, clear out of sight. And so... We may lose these channels, and I just told them, if you do that, I'm done with you, because I don't have a contract with it. Well, and, you know, I feel the same way you do. Uh, I'm very, very partial uh, to another network that I really enjoy getting on Dish TV, and that's RFD TV. I love the equine shows on there. I love some of the wholesome family shows, some of the travel shows. I just thoroughly enjoy it. And if they take that away from me, I have the same attitude you do. Well, and this... I love the Western Channel. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And I get it. And I, I just enjoy the old movies. One of my favorites right now on the Western Channel is Death Valley Days. Oh, yes. And I really enjoy that. You know, they had a lot of hosts on that show, uh, Death Valley Days, and of course, one being very famous and prominent, it was a TV series weekly that Ronald Reagan was the host. Yes, uh uh-huh. And Dale Robertson, and uh, I can't think of the other person that kind of hosts it. Well, they had quite a few over the span of its running on television, and Death Valley Days, really uh, it highlighted historical occurrences. Uh, Some were embellished a little bit, but a lot of historical occurrences, some even up here in the state of Idaho, and I agree with you. It's a good channel and very interesting. (laughs) Like, for instance, I think it was night before last when they were on, it was about this guy in Texas, I can't think of what his name is now, but uh, that was before Texas became a state. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so the sheriff of the U.S. was after him and the sheriff of Texas was after him. Oh, my goodness. So he went to his cabin and took some white paint and, and drew down the center just above his bed, and then he laid on the bed crossways. Uh-huh. <laughs> so the... 
They couldn't take one without the other, and they just outsmarted them. Oh. Just a nice, nice little show. And you know, and I'm totally in agreement with you that uh, I absolutely want better television. I want better programming. And I've said at the end of my program, my slogan, the way things were are the way things ought to be. And quite frankly, I feel that about television. I would much rather watch the old westerns, the old movies, the old TV sitcoms than the garbage that's on today. Well... I I called them, like I said, and I laid it on the line, and you know what they did for me? They said, you don't need to worry. We're not going to raise it or anything else, but what we're going to do is to give $5 off your bill for the next 10 months. Oh, whoopee yippee. Keith, I, I got to run, but for five bucks, it doesn't make my anger go away if I were you. But uh, anyway, I appreciate it. I'm going to look into the packages that we have and see what the potentiality is of having threats of some programs and some networks taken away. I'm glad you mentioned that. Thank you for your call. Well, the whole thing of it is Viacom is the one that's stirring this whole thing up. It's not Dish. Okay. I will check. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. I will, my friend. It is going to be a beautiful day. Wow, what a weather forecast. Come on, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Are you tired? I want you folks to call me this morning right now and tell me. I've got a question for you, a simple question, really, and we've talked about it before. Are you tired and fed up? With government intrusion into your life, your job, your recreation, are you mad enough to do something, something to change the way that government is taking over and ruining our lives? I'd like some options on this. Caller, stand by. I'll be right there to take your call. Don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. They will help you get back to being you. Oh, Nick Greenwood. Sharp as attack, physical therapist, along with all of his physical therapists at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 6781191. I had to kind of lay off a little bit because of an injection in my hip, and I can't wait to get started back down there again. All the exercises, all the sports medicine, everything at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, and the number 6781191. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, I appreciate what Keith had to say, and that's exactly why we got rid of first uh, this network. Uh, uh, oh, totally gone out of my mind now. The names of both of those satellite systems, first one and then the other, because uh, the program was changing and the prices were going up and up and up, and finally we said enough, and we've gone to Roku and love it. You know, uh, I've heard this story so many times from people that are absolutely sick and tired of the service. And one other thing that I wanted to ask you about real quickly, some of the sleazy, and I underline the word sleazy, representatives of some of these network programmings that go door to door to try to get you to switch, I've thrown all of them off my property. We uh, never did have them coming to our home, but uh, we had... We had searched out for whatever we wanted years ago for a, a business proposition and then eventually went to DISH. But both of them, both of the satellite systems just did not suit us. And so when the prices just kept going up and the programming was changed, we said, no, we're through. Uh, we don't want it. Okay, well, I tell you what. We can choose what we want. That a girl, and I'll tell you what, I'll bring the ice cream. Just invite me over. We'll watch television at your house. Sounds good. All right. God bless you. Thank you very, very much. Oh, a lot of problems. You know, entertainment in your home. You can't afford to really go other places and be entertaining. You've got to really kind of rely on the old popcorn machine right out in your kitchen on the counter. And it just seems like you've got some insidious forces that are trying to take things away. I know that here recently, and I can't give you all the chapter and verse. I don't know everything about every circumstance. I'm not a talk show host that's going to blow the head about how smart he is. But uh, I know that Dish was having some problems with RFD-TV. I'm not saying they caused the problem. 
but they were having some problems, and they were making threats that they were going to possibly take RFD TV off of their programming schedule. I, for one, I am sick and tired of hearing all these threats. Well, they might need more money. Well, they might want this. Hey, listen, you settle it internally, but don't go back on us, the viewers. We have been punched in the jaw too many times. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. May 17th is the primary election day. Write that on your calendar. And on behalf of Senator Kelly Anthon, Representative Fred Wood, and the Speaker of the House, Scott Becky, go vote. There's no excuse not to. Be a proud American and go vote on May 17th. And remember, take your ID, your picture ID. You should be proud of who you are and proud that you're voting. Polls open from 8 to 8. Don't forget May 17th. Paid for by Senator Kelly Anthon, Representative Fred Wood, and House Speaker Scott Bedke. Some really good folks serving our community. Another gentleman that's serving our community. Minidoka County Sheriff Eric Snar running for re-election, a hard-working sheriff that's out in the field doing any job necessary, any job necessary, to serve you. His pledge to you, make your community safer, and he appreciates your vote. Don't forget, when it comes to going to the polls on May 17th, remember, for re-election, Minidoka County Sheriff Eric Snar, paid for by the re-elect Eric Snar for Sheriff Jason Gibbons' secretary. All right, your turn. Give me a call. 436-224-1866-927-4587. I want to hear what you have to say. Really, are you tired? I am fed up over the top of my hairline with government interaction and intervention into our lives. Well, you can't go here. Why? Well, because the government said so. You can't eat this. Why? Because the government says so. You can't do this because the government says so. You can't touch someone or hug someone. Oh, the government says so. I've had it. They're ruining and wrecking our lives, and we've got to somehow pull back on the reins in a very distinctive manner. And let government know that enough is enough. They've been way oversaturated in our lives. And the federal government's principal, principal power that they should be exercising is protecting you and I and our borders. Are they doing that? No. No. I am sickened by the encroachment of what's going on with this administration. I am sickened by what's happening with a split court right now, the Supreme Court, and uh, a 4-4 split. And what's happening is the liberals on that Supreme Court are basically trying to rewrite and in, rewrite the law and enforce it in their liberal loon ways. We've got problems. We've got a lot of problems. And I'd like to hear what you think we can do. We've got to come up with some solutions. We need, and I'll use this word very carefully, a revolution in this country of going back to the basics of what America is, was, and should be. We're certainly not on the right track right now. Your thoughts, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. By the way, if you're having some hearing problems, you went to a dinner the other night and you had trouble hearing the people across the table, or maybe you were at church and you're going, Hey, Martha, what did he say? Well, listen, I'll tell you, you better call for a hearing screening at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Yes, what a tremendous asset this is to our community. If you're having trouble hearing, the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup will make sure that with that hearing screening, she can and will help. So please call today at 312-0957, 312-0957, and when she can get right to the crux of the problem and find out what to do to correct it. Dr. Christine Pickup, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, 312-0957. Give her a call right now today. Please, tell her Zeb sent you. 
Oh, and by the way, uh, Lennox Home Comfort Systems, as my lovely bride just walked into the studio, you want to get on the air and say something this morning? And that was an emphatic no. Uh, Lennox Home Comfort Systems through Ramsey Heating and Electric, offering rebates on qualified Lennox Home Comfort Systems, gas furnaces, air conditioners, and heat pumps. You and your family will enjoy the comfort. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, saving you money. Absolutely. Your turn. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. You have heard... Uh, Over the last couple of years, the antis, the antis, no, you can't do this. No, you can't go fracking for oil or whatever. My goodness, that cow scared me to death. Good morning. You're on the air, caller. Thank you for your time. Good morning, Jeb. Happy birthday, boy. You know what I think we ought to do is... Change our laws to where a senator can run two times at the most. I think we need to cut their payback to that of an E5 in the service and get tough on them. I can't argue that. I agree with you. You know what? I I was always against term limits. I was, because I said the vote and the ballot box would provide the term limits necessary. I'm not sure about that anymore. I think that we've got to become much more forceful, much more of a voice in telling them, the politicians, what we want done. Well, it looks to me like they are self-serving. The only thing they do is serve themselves, fill their pockets, give themselves benefits. They pass laws they aren't going to obey. It's just ridiculous what's going on in our Senate and our House and our presidency these days. I agree. I absolutely agree. Okay, but now we've voiced a problem. Jerry, stop. You're a dear friend at your birthday, and you're a man that's smart. What can and should we be doing? Please tell me something. Give me an idea. Well, I think one thing we ought to do is put term limits in there. Okay. Let them run one time for one office or two times for one office and never again. Okay. I think you would get some turnover in there that would give us good people. Don't make it where it costs $20 million or a billion dollars to become or to hold an office. Let me, let me Let's play. The cost back where anybody would that is, you know, service-minded, can run for office. Let me play and devil's advocate. There. Jerry, let me play for, devil's advocate. For the Jerry, Jerry, just a minute. Let me play devil's advocate with you. You just made the statement that there are plenty of good people out there. Those are the words you use. But I ask you, will they get involved? There's a lot of good people out there, sure. I'll go along with that. But will they get involved in politics? Answer that. Because of the corruptness of the system, they just don't want to get their hands into it. I agree. But, you know, I think if it was set up to where it was reasonable to get in, it wasn't all money, I think more people would run. I agree. And people would run that wanted to do some good. I agree with you, my friend. I didn't say it be that way because I just don't know. All right. Happy birthday to you, my dear friend. Again, I mentioned it at the top of the hour. Happy birthday, and thank you for your call. i got to get a commercial in. Thank you. You have a wonderful day, and may the Lord bless you. Uh, he has. Thank you very much. Caller number two, I'll be right there. Don't go away. Just sit there and twiddle your thumbs for 30 seconds, I promise. Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 E Street in Rupert. Oh, what a bakery. Oh, what a restaurant. You're going to love it. Every Monday, we give away a half dozen cinnamon rolls from Sophie's Chatterbox. you be listening. 530 E Street in Rupert. Also want to mention to you our dear friends at Maisie. Penetron Soil Conditioner. 
Turner by Maisie with a 22-year proven record of increasing yields and quality of all Idaho crops. Absolutely. Speeding germination, reducing crusting, improving stands, stimulating root growth and microbial activity. I love saying that. And it also saves on irrigation water. Hey, you're going to save money and have better crops. Increase your crop performance with a proven soil conditioner, Penetron by Maisie. Contact your crop advisor today to obtain Penetron soil conditioner. Caller, thank you for your patience. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. This is Joe Taylor. I've got two free lunches to first-time seniors today at the Golden Heritage Senior Center, South on Overland. Now, we're going to have roast beef, mashed taters and gravy, some vegetables, and some yummy dessert. So the first two that get there about a quarter to 12 and tell Sharon that they're first-time participants at the Golden Heritage Senior Center... I'm going to buy their lunch. Joe, you are one of the nicest people that I've ever met and so community-oriented. So what you're telling me is that uh, two new people that have never been there before and want to have lunch and enjoy the surroundings and friendly people like yourself, if they walk in the door and say, Howdy, here I am, you're going to buy their lunch. Absolutely. I got two last week, and uh, they're... They're back playing bingo even. Oh, my goodness. Well, Joe, God bless you and everything you do, and uh, you are the ageless person of perfection. Thank you so much. Have a great day. We appreciate you and your show. God bless you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that nice? There, there's a man right there. I wish we could all be more like him. You know, great personality, caring about people, caring about situations, caring about new folks maybe enjoying a surrounding they've never been to before. That's really nice. Joe Taylor, I salute you. Thank you so much. Calls are welcome and appreciated. Come on, give me a jingle, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. If you didn't know, I want to get into another story here in a minute, but i got to tell you, Hillary and Trump... Both very easily yesterday in New York won their primaries for their respective parties. Uh, Trump won in a landslide at 60 percent, better than 60 percent of the vote. And Kasich, John Kasich, came in with about half of that, a little less than half of that. And Cruz... And Cruz, (laughs) he is in deep doo-doo for what he said about New Yorkers. And I think he only had roughly about 15% of the vote. Teddy kind of stepped in some deep doo-doo. He really did. Now, Hillary, on the other hand, Hillary, on the other hand. Oh, by the way, Deanne, look at this. Did you see this picture this morning in the paper? That's Hillary Clinton. That's the scariest picture I've ever seen of her in my life. If you get the Times News, and I don't know why, but if you get the Times News, look on, I think it's page A6, and there is a picture of Hillary pointing at the audience. Now, if that isn't a sorrowful, absolutely pitiful picture of a possible president. you got to see this. I mean, she's pointing at the office, uh, at the audience, and she looks like uh, Phyllis Diller. Honestly, looks like Phyllis Diller. Couldn't, you couldn't tell them apart. That is a horrendous picture of Hillary. Now I got sidetracked. Hillary, by the way, defeated Bernie, but not without a lot of controversy. Did you hear about this? Some of the polling places in New York yesterday admit that they had problems. In the Brooklyn area, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of angry people that claim they were going to vote for Bernie, and the polling places didn't open up on time. Some opened up as long as two and a half, three hours late. Some people's names were removed from the polling lists. Papers were missing, and old Bernie, old wild-haired Bernie, is a little bit more than upset about this and is very seriously thinking about challenging with an audit. So all is not well on the, re uh, I should say, on the Democratic side. Calls welcome, 436 
But I love it when I see this picture of Hillary. Honest, I want somebody to look this up and give it to me. That is the most unflattering picture of anybody, especially Hillary Clinton. I mean, she honestly looks like a circus clown. Hmm. Well, there might be a correlation there. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental, uh, three locations, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have all the equipment you need to get the job done right. I have been featuring on this program a wonderful, fantastic opportunity for you to buy a Coyote tractor. Zero percent interest for 60 months. Six zero. You better get in there and see the deal that they can offer you. Absolutely, that is a phenomenal deal. Coyote tractor, zero percent interest. For 60 months, they've got all the equipment, the Doosan loaders, Bobcats, all the Walker mowers. Oh, my, a lot of lawn mowing going to be going on here. And uh, you stop in and see them today. Jerome, Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. And that's Barry Equipment and Rental. Got a couple of politicians that I want to talk about this hour, and I'm going to check my list here right now and see who they are. Well, my goodness sakes, Kelly Anthon, Idaho State Senator running for re-election. I'll tell you what, this man has done a phenomenal job, and Kelly is a strong voice for agriculture and has a proven record of success in economic development. He believes in prosperity, is the result of limited, predictable, and efficient government, and the rights to speak freely, bear arms, and practice religion must be defended. Kelly has a unique ability to represent the entire Minicash area. We don't want to lose him. Kelly Anthon, Idaho State Senator. And vote to re-elect Kelly Anthon, State Senator, Elaine Stevenson, Treasurer. By golly, there's a nice lady, too, and I want to say thank you for all she does. Oh, and by the way, there is another gentleman running for office of Cache County Commissioner District 3, Tim Darrington, a lifelong resident of Cache County, is a farmer and a rancher and steward of the land, and uh, he's very concerned about the direction that Cache County is headed and wants to work for you. He wants to provide good road, safe environment, good quality life, and encouraging job opportunities, new industry, and smart growth in Cashew County. Don't forget, vote for Tim Darrington, Cashew County Commissioner, District 3, paid for by the Darrington 4 Commissioner Committee, Gail Erickson, Treasurer. Have a question, another question. I'm just loaded with questions here this morning. Have you really sat down and thought about these liberal loons, some that live here in Magic Valley, that want to stop all oil and diesel usage. Oh, they want to see those gas pumps just tip over and go away. Have you really thought about that? Have you really thought about the absolute stupidity and absolute not going to happen getting rid of gas and diesel? You know, here, just think about this. If if they're promoting, leave it in the ground. Don't touch it. Don't pump it. Don't use it. Have you really thought about how we're going to go about being a civilized society? Oh, let's talk about that. All of a sudden tomorrow, if they say green energy only, how are the trucks going to replace all the shelves that are empty with groceries for you and your family to eat. What's the transportation system going to be like? There won't be any. There won't be the Albertsons trucks, the Smith's Food King, or the Stokes, because they will all be gone because they don't have any products on the shelf. No food. There won't be any mail delivery. There won't be any agriculture. How are you going to grow the crops? What are you going to do? Put a propeller on the back of a John Deere? You know, people do not think that we absolutely, until all of a sudden there's a bolt from the blue someplace, and we come up with another source of energy that's acceptable, amenable, and affordable, it's just not going to happen. What about medical services? You won't be able to get to the hospital or see your doctor. We will see death and chaos. There won't be any travel, there won't be any tourism, there won't be any towns. Caller, good morning, you're on the air. 
Good morning again. You know, you just did a a, a paid commercial uh, to like somebody for county commissioner. Yeah. The only thing that I don't approve of or I don't think it's quite right is right now we have three pretty good people, I think, but they are all farmers. Can't we get some other representation in there, like a businessman or something? What are wrong with people? Why don't they want to run for these offices? Well, now, first of all, let me take this uh, from the get-go. Number one, I am not going to criticize any candidate, any candidate, for their running for any political office. That is not fair. That is not right. I applaud them. I applaud them. I don't care what their backgrounds are. I applaud them for running. So I'm not going to just uh, make it so that you can discern one special group or whatever, because I applaud the people that stick their neck out to run for an office. And I do, too. But why don't somebody from other fields... All right. You answer that question, Keith. You answer that. You answer that question. I can't. I can't sit here. I can give you opinions, but I can't tell you why. I mean, that's a vagary. How in the world am I going to tell uh, somebody that might be in the tire business, somebody that might be in the pharmaceutical business, somebody that might be in the shoe business, how am I going to condemn or criticize them if they don't run? I don't even know who they are or what they want to do. Well, I am somewhat the same in that manner. I, I, as far as I know, these commissioners have done a good job. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be great to have a variety? To someone who is in the agricultural-based business, they're going to look out for that field. That's for sure. And a businessman will look at it maybe from a different slant. And the three of them can get together, and we'll wind up with something really good. All right. Now, right there, though, right there, Keith, I agree with you. But I'm just saying that I would like to see more people run for these offices. Yeah. And I can't argue that. I am in total agreement. I am worried. I am worried, Keith, uh, that we're not seeing enough people say, hey, I'd like to be a state senator. Hey, I'd like to be a congressman. Hey, I'd like to run for a congressional seat nationally. I, I think that absolutely you're 100% right. But under the current vein of thought, getting involved in politics is A, very expensive, and B, and the biggest reason, it is a dirty business. Well, it can be, that's for sure. <laughs> and we're seeing it right now on the national scene. Yeah. I've never seen name calling and nicknames and all of these people like we're seeing right now. But with Hillary, you that's the most deceitful person I think that I know of. I'll let it go at that, and I've got to get a weather forecast in here. Keith, God bless. Thank you for your call back. I appreciate it. And I do agree that more people need to get involved. Lots more. Thank you. Time for our weather, and it's brought to you by Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service. 336 South, 450 West of Paul. Number to call Scott. Old Scott, the tree man, and his crew for all your pruning of your trees and the developing and installation of your sprinkler system systems or reparation of your sprinkler systems, you call 431-8733. They are good. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Let's take a look at the weather as we are moving and grooving through the work week. Looks like sunny skies for today, a little bit on the soft and breezy side, which is going to be nice. High of 76, overnight low of 46. Tomorrow going to be the best day. Mostly sunny skies. Winds out of the southeast right around 11 miles an hour. Expect a high of 80, overnight low of 47. Now, winds are picking up on Friday. Partly cloudy skies. Uh, winds out of the southeast right around 21 miles an hour. High of 80 with an overnight low of 56. Saturday, a complete game changer. Rain showers. It is going to be windy out of the southwest right around 22 miles an hour. Only a high of 57 is what we're expecting for Saturday with an overnight low of 40. And then for Sunday, partly cloudy, windy, and 62. 
Yesterday's high was 70. The overnight low was 34. That is your weather for Seven Thread. All righty dighty. Thank you very much, Gina. I appreciate that. Great forecast. Great forecast. Look outside. It's phenomenal. There you go. Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service at 336 South, 450 West of Paul, 431-8733. You get a hold of them today. You know, really, somebody give me a call on this because I, the liberals, and especially the young millennials, this is for the 30 and under crowd. And I open the door right now, right now, and I invite you to call 436-2244-1866-927-4587. If you are a young millennial and you are one of these kind of people that says, leave it in the ground, we don't need it. You call me and explain how and why. Tell me how and why. How are we going to all of a sudden stop our society? How are we all of a sudden going to stop the mass, intricate transportation system all over this country? Trucks leaving New Jersey with goods for here. Trucks leaving L.A. going back to St. Louis, Missouri. I mean, whatever the case might be. How? How are you going to stop it? Oh, well, we're going to raise prices so they can't afford to buy it. Well, that's real smart. The consumer will eventually reach a point of no return to where they can't afford it, and you're looking up a complete dried-up society, people starving to death, people without their medications, people that can't go anywhere, they can't have any quality of life, and our society is doomed. Go ahead. I welcome a young millennial to call and tell me I'm wrong. Where is your great idea that all of a sudden, overnight, click, we're going to have an energy system? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Uh, I think we're looking at a situation where a lot of these millennials have never had a hard day or uh, lived a hard life or been through anything like a uh, depression. And this is why they think the way they do. They well, figure, well, the taxpayers are there, and uh, they're going to beef them up and pay for everything they've got for the rest of their days. But uh, pretty soon, the taxpayers are going to find that their wallets are empty. They quit spending. And then where are you going to be? Well, and I blame not just the millennials for thinking this. I blame the colleges, the universities, and also the high schools. They've got a bunch of absolutely green tree teachers that don't know the difference between Khmer and Sikkim when it comes to really what the world operates on and how it needs to operate to be successful and keep a civilized society growing and prospering. They don't know, and they're teaching these kids, like at a lot of colleges and universities, Tony, oh, leave it in the ground. Well, yeah, you leave it in the ground, and that's where you're going to be buried in the ground, too. Well, it's going to take a lot of years to come up with alternate sources of energy. You know, in the days of Buck Rogers and Flash Ford, that might have been okay. But today, it's a fallacy. Absolutely. You know, I, I just absolutely wish that some of these, I call them buffoons, and I think that's what they are. The younger, 30 and under, and their teachers that are preaching, leave it in the ground. These buffoons, I wish they'd call on this program and try to arbitrate, because they don't have a leg to stand on. As a matter of fact, they're on very thin ice. Well, they don't want to hear anything that's sensible. You know, they're, they're being programmed in the high schools today about this political correctness, and everything's going to be taken care of by the taxpayers. Yeah, that's right. Tony, I always appreciate your words of wisdom because you've been there and done that. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Jim. God bless you, man. Thanks. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know... I remember having a conversation at an airport uh, not uh, just a couple of years ago, and this younger person was probably uh, maybe 32, and he was talking to another friend, and then I got involved in the conversation. They asked me my opinion. I told them, <clears throat> go figure that. And they absolutely just don't understand. They do not understand our society, the world society. 
I don't care if you're in France, they got to have delivery trucks. I don't care if you're over in Russia, they got to have delivery trucks. I don't care what kind of a transportation system you have, what kind of an agriculture system you have, whatever. It relies on turning the key, and that combustible engine has got to start and go down the rows, and you're not going to change that overnight. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you. Great big tire sale going on right now. Absolutely. With convenient credit terms available. My goodness. Tires like the Proxys 4 Plus. Oh, that's a great tire for your car. All season performance. Modern dual tread design. You're going to love that one. On sale. All the custom wheels. And then they've got the best in brake service and front end alignments and shocks and struts. Service is the key always they come at a high low pot the door to see what they can do to help you with lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul john on pole line in twin falls and randy on overland in burley your magic valley les schwab tire centers caller i've got exactly 30 seconds really quick well tony hit the nail right on the head when he said uh the millennial thinks, well, the taxpayers will take care of this. The millennials have got to think about they're going to be the, they're the future taxpayers. They don't care because they're not being trained and educated that they have to care. Well, they, they need to realize that hey, the burden is going to be on their back. All these things they want to do. We're not going to be around much longer. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Pay for it. I agree. <laughs> You and I might be around a day or two longer, but not much. Well, you are 100% right. Doug, I wish you to call in a few minutes earlier. I had something else I wanted to ask you about, but uh, call tomorrow morning, okay? I'll do my darndest. All right, Thanks Doug. Thank you. thank you. God bless you. We're going to take a little break for about six minutes and uh, listen to CBS News. But prior to that, Wheels has got this great message, and we'll be back in just a few moments. Oh, my goodness sakes. I made the mistake of looking outside and checking the weather. My goodness, it is beauteous out there today. Oh, my goodness. Thank you very much, Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services. From the canyon. You know, dependable, that is a word that I really can use, not from just here on the radio, not because they're one of our great advertisers, but it's the truth. They are so dependable. Man, when it comes time to come pick up our garbage on that route service weekly, they are there. I'm telling you, you can set your watch by these folks, and they're really nice, friendly people, locally owned and operated. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Give them a call today. Get on the route service seven. 734-6969. Western Waste Services, absolutely the best. Hey, by the way, don't forget, we never start our program in the morning without having our weather forecast first and foremost. And our weather, of course, brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design. 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. All your home uh, decor items, carpet and flooring, kitchen construction, whatever you need to make your house a home at Cheney Flooring and Home Design in Burley. Look for the blue door. Really good, folks. And also, I want to remind you, too, that to, uh, tomorrow, yeah, Thursday, we're going to have the Urgent Care Medical Report. Yep, Urgent Care with our dear friend Kyle James, Riverview Urgent Care, Urgent Care of Jerome, and Urgent Care in Twin Falls. Be listening at 912 tomorrow morning on Thursday for the Urgent Care Medical Report. Right now, it's time to go to the phone line, and I say good morning morning to a dear dear friend of mine and that's hello dave bigo how are you 
Good, Zeb. How are you doing? Uh, how's the, the hip and everything? Oh, let's not talk about negatives. Let's just stay positive. I'm doing 100 uh, in a 25-mile zone, so I guess I'm okay. <laughs> how are you doing, my friend? What's that? I say, how are you doing, my dear friend? So I'm, do- I'm good. Just uh, just busy. I'm um, got a speech today in front of a, a group here today, and... Uh, so it's going to be a busy day. Now, when you deliver these speeches, I'm sure that you're talking about many of the subjects that we discuss here on the radio. And i got to compliment you. You did it again. An outstanding blog about unions possibly infiltrating the Republican Party. Dave, give us an overview of what you wrote about in this week's blog. Yes, Ev, it is pretty interesting. And this was really brought to me by a couple friends uh uh, some people I know out in California and uh, a gentleman I know in Colorado. And uh, the people in California are really frustrated because, you know, California is heavily unionized state anyway, and the unions basically can control it. And uh, But what they've seen is that um, the uh, uh, unions, and specifically the big union that I fight, uh, the uh, SEIU, is um, infiltrating the Republican Party by uh, campaign uh contributions and that, and in turn they're getting um, uh, things voted on that they want or things voted down that they don't want, and uh, it's uh, it's concerning, Zeb, because that's uh, uh, that's the unions, uh, these are part of their tactics that uh, to try and fundamentally change America, and uh, then in Colorado, you know, everybody's probably heard about um, how the Colorado Republican Party um, uh, basically prevented Trump from uh, receiving any Colorado delegates and gave it to Cruz, and uh, if people go in and read my blog, uh, it's very devastating uh, when you read the uh, resolution that they put out, and, uh, you know, basically they said Trump is not a Republican, he's a demigod, uh, and would destroy the uh, Western alliances, and um, at the end of it they said, um, uh, you know, no Republican uh, candidate will be... Um, available or allowed to vote for Trump. So he got all their, uh, you know, uh, nominees out there. Dave, the more I listen to people like yourself and the more I do my own research, uh, in the first hour I was talking about this subject about I'm fed up. I'm absolutely fed up with government intrusion into our lives, our jobs, our recreation. It's We've got to do something now. This election, or I honestly maintain, it will never be the America that you and I grew up in. Well, that's what I'm afraid of. And, um, you know, we need people in office that are there uh, to do the right thing for America and not the right things for themselves in their own pocketbook. And uh, that's what it's becoming, unfortunately, and, and both sides of the aisle, obviously, with, with this coming out. I mean, I was shocked when uh, you know, the guy from Colorado sent me this. And I really encourage your uh, readers to go on and uh, pull it up, my blog up, and uh, read this resolution to forbid uh, Colorado delegates from voting for Donald Trump, and uh, and uh, it's it, it's just crazy. And then you go in and you read uh, the articles that I've got embedded uh, from the people out in California that are embedded in the blog, and uh, you know it's it's just astounding that uh, these people are taking handouts to do the will of the unions. I was really surprised when I read your blog about the involvement, if you will, of the unions getting more involved and more arm-twisting with the Republican Party. I'd like you to elaborate on that a little bit. Well, the unions, um, as I've mentioned many times, they're, uh, they've been in a kind of a death spiral for years. I mean, they you know, represent 11% of the workforce and only 6% of the uh, private workforce. And uh, that's, that's down from, what, 35%, 40% uh, back in the uh, 40s and 50s and that. And uh, so they are desperate to try and find ways to rebuild their membership, and uh, they're doing it through politics. And they've controlled the, uh, the Democratic Party for years. In fact, as I mentioned in my blog, in 2012, the SEIU donated around $225 million dollars um, for the uh, elections that year. 99% of that went to the Democratic Party. And uh, even though they kept Obama in place, they lost the House and the Senate. 
and uh, you have to step back and, and look at it and say, okay, um, they realize they're going to have to infiltrate other areas, so maybe it's time to go after the Republican Party. And that's kind of what uh, you know I'm, I'm pointing out here. Yeah, I know you are, and you did it very well. Uh, now, next week, correct me if I'm wrong, next week, Indiana on Tuesday is going to have their primary. What is it shaping up to be in Indiana? I noticed that you have 57 delegates. Talk to us a little bit about your primary and how you think it's going to go. Well, actually, ours is May uh, 3rd. I'm sorry. I apologize. But, uh, yeah. But, um, you know, it's kind of hard. Uh, it's interesting. I've talked to different um, uh, people around the state and the Republican Party, and uh, I haven't heard a lot in favor of Cruz, but, uh, you know, the networks like Fox will say, and they, they project Cruz will win Indiana. Uh, he, now, I will tell you this. Um, and I didn't put it in my blog. I found out about it a little bit later. Is Cruz will be at the Republican dinner here on Thursday night this week, and um, and speaking there. So uh, you know, maybe overall Republican Party here, even though it says if you if you read my blog, it says that everybody will be able to choose the um, the person they want to to provide their delegate to uh, here in Indiana. We're not going to be like a Colorado or California or something like that. But uh, it's, it's interesting that they've got Cruz um, at the dinner now. Having said that, I did hear that Trump was invited too, but uh, is not going to be in town. I have a question regarding Donald Trump and unions. Right after I've, I've got to do a break here, Dave, and get a commercial in, and I'll be right with you. Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. We're very blessed on this program to have Hanson Mortuary with Joel Hewitt and his staff and his family serving you on the show every day. They're located at 710 Sixth Street in Rupert. Flexible hours to make sure that they are available to serve you when the need arises. Please and remember, always serving you with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. They are available to travel to rural towns and churches to help you with the arrangements for your loved one. Please write the number down and remember 436-5636 436-5636 Handsome Mortuary 710 6th Street in Rupert. Also want to remind you on Mondays it's gardening time. Vicky's Country garden at 185 south 600 west of paul she has all of your garden needs in one stop and all of your uh, beautiful bark for the flower beds and everything you're doing for outside all the decorative rock it's all there at vicky's country garden in paul number to call 438-5663 we're on the air with dave beagle back in indianapolis indiana dave uh, of all the things that have been said and done where does trump in your opinion line up with businesses and unions. What, what are his takes and his stands on unions that you've heard in the past? Um, well, before I answer that, uh, Zeb, I also meant to tell you and your audience that uh, Trump is in Indiana today. Uh, he is speaking out at the um, Indianapolis Fairgrounds today at 3 o'clock, which um, should be interesting. Um, but um, um, I, I think... Most business people that I speak with and talk to, um, you know, even though they think uh, Trump can be a little over over the board at times, uh, he he does understand the free markets and how business works, and that uh, you know we've got to get rid of some of these uh, rules and regulations in this country that keep businesses from growing and providing jobs. And um, as far as the unions, I think a lot of the union members like him. Uh, because he has provided a lot of jobs through his construction projects and stuff like that. Um, I don't think he has had to really put up with some of the stuff like the SEIU and some of the other ones do with their corporate campaigns, you know, death by a thousand cuts. And uh, I think that's where he's going to um, uh, gonna have to learn some things. You know, we have a caller with a question for you, Dave, so stand by. Caller, go ahead, please. You're on the air. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, how do you think Trump stands with uh, stands with or against uh, big unions? And, and their, if I may have missed it, if I have, I apologize. I'll wait for an answer. Thank All right. I'll have Dave kind of reissue his answer to me. Go ahead, Dave, please. Well, I don't think Trump is, uh, and, and please let me reiterate, too, I'm not anti-union. Um, 
I just think the unions and uh, the union bosses have lost their way, and uh, they really don't represent their membership anymore. They represent themselves, and uh, and I think uh, I think Trump understands some of that too. I just don't think he's been exposed to some of the stuff uh, that. Um, uh, attacks and that that uh, some of us have out here, but he's going to just like he did in Chicago and St. Louis and that uh, Phoenix uh, when he spoke in those places. You know they had uh, the rallies out there, and uh, you know there's no definite proof, but I'm sure that uh, people like the SEIU were involved in those type of things. Let me ask you this, Dave, and and then I've got another subject I want you to elaborate on. You know. And I'm not trying to be uh, against anyone in the race. I'm not trying to say anything anti-Trump. I'm not trying to say anything anti-Cruz. But they knew the rules before the primary started. The rules differed in various states and circumstances. So what are your thoughts about what many call a crybaby attitude about Trump? Well, I, I think uh, he's obviously learning as he goes through the process, and he should have had people in place that were um, looking ahead to this type of thing. However, the other side of it, when you look at things like Colorado, where they're completely bypassing the rules, he's got a legitimate complaint. And uh, and what's going on in California, you know. Now, again, he's being projected to win California uh, and, and get a pretty good size uh, portion of the delegates out there. Um, I am concerned that uh, when the unions get involved, they're going to go after him pretty hard, uh, and it could be interesting. Now, having said that, uh, there's a lot of union members, like some of the ones I mentioned in my book, The Devil at Our Doorstep, that uh, are in favor of the union bosses and favor Trump and what he does, and they're going to go vote for him. You know, Dave, uh, you are the author of two books and uh, your blog, and you're heavily involved as a big employer. Uh, I said earlier this morning that America's got a lot of problems, and uh, we talked about this as far as uh, I think this election is going to be extremely important to restore some of the basics, some of the Saturday Evening Post covers on their magazine, if you will, back to America. Uh, we're at the 11th hour, and what's going on in politics today with the Supreme Court, a very very liberal uh, slant to the Supreme Court. Obama going overseas right now, being with Saudi Arabia. Uh, I think there's a lot of questions to be asked there. Why he's going over at this time? It seems like to smooth over a volatile situation about their involvement in 911. I just don't see a lot of honesty in politics. Your thoughts? Well, that's the problem we have, Zeb. Um and again, it's, uh, I see it more on the Democratic side, but I see it on both sides of the aisle. Because uh, if you've been to Washington a lot like I have, uh, people are too caught up in their lifestyles and, um, and you know, and the power that they wield in that. And uh, they don't, they don't want to let it go. And, uh, you know, again, we got to get back to basics. Our forefathers, they believe that people should uh, get involved in politics for a short period of time, one or two terms to do what's right and help this country then go back to the private workforce and uh, you know help that grow and uh, they didn't envision what we have today where people let's, let's look at Bernie Sanders Bernie's basically never held a job or until he was what 40 years old that's something right like that yeah and then it hasn't been much uh, he's been in politics most of his life we need people that understand what America is all about in Washington. You know, and before I even get into this other subject, I want to ask you this. You know, I was asking last hour my audience to give me a call because it's the millennial generation right now. Those 30 and under and the fault of also their teachers and professors in college that are leading America down the wrong trail of thought thinking all of a sudden they can stop our energy program and automatically put a propeller on their car or a tractor, and they can live the same happy life that they are now. They are so naive, and they're being so misinstructed in these colleges and universities and the high school ranks, I'm really fearful of some of the garbage that's going into their minds. Well, you're exactly right, and... Um you know, that's the same thing the union bosses do when they get out. And uh, and they're going to be, you know, going back to the election, they're, they're going to have their ground game out there talking to the millennials and these people that they know are naive and uh, easily brainwashed. And um, uh, that's going to be their tactics. And, of course, you know, you have the same thing going on in uh, a lot of the colleges and universities, not all of them, but a lot of them, because uh, you have people in there that are, are idealists. Uh, they base everything on... 
theory and not on uh, what's actually factual in life. And uh, uh, we need to get away from that. We need to have people that are teaching our um, kids in high school and college that have been in the free market and been in business and held a real job or run a business and really understand what this country is all about. And it's what's made it the greatest country in the history of the world. Dave, I've got to ask you about another subject uh, I've been following, and it has to do with sports, uh, male sports, female sports, Title IX, etc. There seems to be such a big move right now to force different baseball teams, NBA, NFL, etc., you must hire so-and-so because they are of a different color. You must look at women to put them in the broadcast booth. You must contemplate in the future possibly naming women to be managers of Major League Baseball teams. This is insane. What are your thoughts? Well, again, it's, it's, it's this far-left progressive group that, uh, you know, they don't know how to do anything but uh, push things that they theoretically believe in. Uh, they, uh, they have no real-life experience of what uh, it really takes. And uh, that's, the, that's the shame about this. And I'll tell you one thing that I have pushed uh, when I've talked to um, you know, principals and presidents of high schools and colleges is that one thing we need in this country is, is you know, we have required classes uh, in high school and in colleges for math and science and geography and stuff like that. We need it on the free markets on business and how they really work and what it really takes to make something successful and uh, all the details behind it like having to meet payrolls and, and benefits and taking care of people and uh, you know selling and, and having to make a profit to, to survive because if people would understand that they'd appreciate what's going on in this country and not be out on a limb like uh, these people are. Well, okay, wait a minute. Stop. I'm going to put you on the hook right there. Then why isn't Dave Bego and why aren't you leading the charge and forming a coalition? I'll join. I'll help. And demanding that this kind of a course be offered and really demanding that it be uh, looked at and studied and make the young millennials realize what a valuable country with capitalism that we have. Well, Zab, I guess I try. To, I've tried to do that through my my writings and my blogs, and uh, through getting out when I'm speaking in front of people and stuff like that. And um, you know, and, and I've tried to get people interested in it. Uh, and, I, and I guess you know, as we move along, we're going to have to push it harder. Oh, by the way, just as a note to wrap up this segment, my Cubs are in first place with a four-game lead in their division, and they've taken two in a row from the Cardinals. Gee, how is your team doing? I don't want to talk about my team. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a spoiled attitude. <laughs> but, but, but let me put it in perspective. It's only April. Yeah, that part scares me too, Dave. <laughs> I've seen the Cubs in first place in April and in last place in September, so it could happen. God bless you, man. Thank you, and the very best to you and all your family, your uh, asset to this program. Thanks, Dave B. Go back in Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, thanks, and have a great week. All right, buddy, thanks. I, I really enjoy that, man. He's not only a good friend, but he's very, very smart on the issues of today. In Indianapolis, Indiana, Dave Bego, thank you for being on the program. Holy cow, we got to pay some bills. we got to tell you about some candidates that are running in the primaries. How about Cache County Sheriff Candidate Scott Yates? Yes, he's not a part of the establishment, and he wants to invite you to listen to his viewpoints at an open house that's going to be at the Burley Senior Center, the Golden Heritage, tomorrow, Thursday, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and talk to him about his candidacy to be possibly your Cache County Sheriff. Don't forget, if you have questions, you can call him, too, 432-2221. Scott Yates, running for Cache County Sheriff, paid for by the Yates for Cache County Sheriff Committee. Julie Jaime, the treasurer, thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, let's not forget forget uh, candidate for Cache County Commissioner District 3, Tommy Hutchison. Hello, Tommy. He wants your vote May 17th for Cache County Commissioner District 3, a straight shooter, tell it like it is businessman that wants 
better for Cache County residents. He said changes are needed for everyone to enjoy and pursue a better life in Cache County. He's a hard worker and wants to work for you. Tommy Hutchison for District 3 Cache County Commissioner, paid for by Hutchinson for Commissioner Don Frazier Treasurer. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Hey, there is going to be a great event, and it's uh, really turned into a sensational women's event yearly. Hats off to simplicity. This is the title for the Women's Seminar and Expo, going to be held on April 28th, coming up next week from 930 to 3.30 at at the Best Western Inn in Burley. Lunch will be served from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Tickets are 20 bucks by April 22nd, the end of this week, and 23 at the door. Don't forget, this is going to be a great event with a lot of uh, vendors and different booths, displays, great speakers, and it's sponsored by the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Idaho Housing and Finance Association, Elite Restoration, Intermountain Cash Regional Medical Center, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing, aids and of course title one corporation coming up on april 28th Uh, in just a few moments we are expecting to have a call from our United States Senator for Idaho, Jim Risch. So stand by for that. That's why I'm trying to double up a little bit on some of our commercial announcements. Uh, Senator Jim Risch should be calling in momentarily. Wheels will give me the high sign. Don't forget, Mother's Day is May 8th, and the drift in at 545 F Street, and Rupert says, hey, it's a special day for Mom. Call now and make reservations at the drift in. Great food. I'm telling you firsthand, folks, great food at the drift in. And Rupert. Number to call for reservations for Mother's Day, 436 1300. 436 1300. Delicious specials prime rib, finger steaks, butterfly shrimp. Oh, you're going to love it at the Drift Inn in Rupert. And the Book Plaza at 222 West 11th Street in Burley says, Hey, give mom a great gift of a new book from the Book Plaza with Colonel Dale, our dear friend, at 222 West 11th Street in Burley. I mean, all the different kinds of books, you know, poems and, and fiction stories and just tell mom to sit down and relax and read thanks to a book from the book plaza at 222 west 11th street in burley really good folks celebrating mother's day uh, again we are waiting to get the call from uh, jim rish and uh, like I said, uh, wheels will be letting us know momentarily. I, I, I hang in limbo waiting for these people to call sometimes. I want to remind you that tomorrow is Lunch Bunch. And it's going to be held at Denny's Restaurant at 611 Overland in Burley. And my thank yous to some other special folks, including Smith's Food, Hanson Mortuary, Walmart, and Stokes Grocery. Thank you very much for getting involved. Thank you very much for providing. Providing the gift certificates for our door prize drawings. We do appreciate it. And again, Lunch Bunch will be tomorrow at 1130. And we urge you to be in attendance. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, while we wait patiently or maybe not patiently for Senator Risch I want to remind you too about Let's Ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're all geared up for the summertime. And now is the time to check out buying a four-wheeler or a side-by-side and enjoy the weather like today. Get up in the hills and just absolutely have a phenomenal time. And uh, they've got Suzuki's at 0%, 0% financing right now. And all the watercraft, my goodness sakes, you better get over where the fun is sold. Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. Serving you, let's ride. Wheels, have we heard from the senator yet? Yes, sir. He's on the phone. Ah, very good. Nice to have him back. It's been a long time. United States Senator from the great state of Idaho, Jim Risch. Good morning, Jim. How are you? 
Zeb, I can't tell you how good it is to talk to you. It's been a long time, my friend, and I've got a lot of questions. I've got a lot of questions. Here we go. I've got a few answers. I, you know, Jim, that's what I like about you. You're blunt and to the point like I am. I know you've got the answers. Okay, first off, I am not a fan of the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement. I don't like it. I've read it. I think it's going to hurt American jobs. I think it's going to hurt America, and it gives power to other countries over us. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, I, uh, as with most of these things, uh, there is some truth to what you say, but there's also some truth on the other side about uh, what we need to be doing as far as uh, creating jobs in America, and that is uh, uh, having a robust trade system. I mean, you can't, you cannot pull up the, the drawbridge and say, look, we're just going to do business with ourselves in America. Ninety-plus percent of the customers, consumers in the world, live outside of the United States. So you've got to have an agreement with the nations uh, in order to trade with them. And if you don't, somebody else will. And indeed, uh, we're getting beat uh, all the time by China and by other countries as far as them uh, getting uh, uh, trade agreements in place. So. Um, th there's always some shifts that happen. Somebody will find somebody that says, look, you entered in this trade agreement, as a result of that, I lost my job. And uh, you turn around and say, yes, and here's three people that got a job because of the trade agreement. I mean, yes, those things happen, just like when they quit making buggies. The buggy with maker makers had to turn into making uh, uh, axles. It just... Uh, there is shift. There's no question about it. But if you if you don't have a robust trade system, you've got a real problem as far as uh, going into the 21st century because we just we cannot. A good example of that is the uh, is NASA. You know, uh, uh, my my cowboy friends all uh, uh, and and as you know, I'm I'm uh, in the cattle business. We we run a few a few hundred pair of black and white baldy cows. My cattle guys always say, "Oh, this NASA's killing us," and they say, "You know, guys." Um, I, I've been to Mexico and uh, and looked at the trade agreement there. Most people, most people will not believe this when you tell them that. But we are right side up in our trade with uh, on agricultural products with Mexico by a billion dollars. So if you take all that they ship to us and all that we ship to them, we ship them a billion dollars more in ag products than they ship us. So I say to everybody, we can, we sure can uh, stop that, but you better be able, you better be ready to eat a billion dollars more in food. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. Jim, wouldn't you agree with me, though, that like in the case with the Trans-Pacific uh, Trade Agreement, there are so many vagaries, there are so many shadows, there are so many things that we don't know that I think the American public, because it falls back on us mostly, we should be more informed as to what's going on. I think a lot of times the wording is not exactly clear. Okay, you are absolutely right on every single thing that you just said. I can't argue with that. I absolutely can't argue with that. Um, having said that, that doesn't mean you throw the baby in the backwater out and turn your back on it. I mean, uh, you, you've got to negotiate the, uh, to the best position you can possibly get, and then you make the decision that you're either going to quit making products and send them overseas, or you you deal under the terms that, uh, that, that you can negotiate. I, it, 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 look, if, if you're looking for me to stand up and say this is great and glorious and perfect, you're talking to the wrong guy, because that's not the case. But uh, from a pragmatic stand, from a pragmatic standpoint, you've got to trade with a 90 plus uh, percent of customers outside of uh, outside of the United States, or we'll we'll get left further behind by China than what we're already doing. Right here. Jim, energy right now is always in the forefront, and this administration currently, I think, has done a lot to uh, hurt energy progress in this country and, for that matter, the world. And we're hearing these young millennials, the 30 and under crowd, condemn anything to do with fossil fuels, leave it in the ground, and their professors are staging protests at universities. You know, we need energy. We can't go out and push a John Deere tractor down the field with a propeller. How do you address these people and make them understand that we need energy for our future and our progress. Well, you'll never make them understand that. Those people that uh, that are true believers, uh, it, it is like a religion with them, and uh, you, you can't take people who have a religious belief and sit them down and change that that, that belief. Having said that, uh, I, I share your uh, uh, view of what this administration has done, and for that matter, I share your view of. Uh, 
uh, the fact that uh, the fossil fuel industry is, is here and it's going to be here for quite some time. And uh, people need to quit whining about it and accept what they have and, uh, and move forward. But uh, uh, as far as uh, forcing people to believe that, um, it's not going to happen. This morning, as we speak, President Obama with the Saudi Arabian leadership, and I'll say this, and I'm a little concerned, I think all that's going on now with the 9-11 papers and the discussions about Saudi Arabia's involvement, and now our president's over there visiting with these folks, I'm a little concerned as to where we're going and what kind of friendships this administration's developing before they leave office. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I sit on the Intelligence Committee, so I'm privy to uh, information along all those lines. Um, I, um, uh, I, I, I'm kind of hamstrung in what I can say and what I can't say here. Saudi Arabia has been an ally of the United States for many, many, many years, and we don't have a lot of friends in that neighborhood. They certainly are one. Jordan's uh, another one, and Israel, obviously, is the best friend we've got in the neighborhood. Um, but... Uh, when, when you're dealing with countries like Saudi Arabia, they're different than we are, and you have to accept those differences. Um, on the 9-11 situation, um, I, I, there's, there's people who claim that this, because there were 15 of the 19 you know, hijackers that were Saudi Arabia nationals, so somehow they think that uh, they can connect that to the Saudi Arabian government. I've seen no evidence uh, to that effect uh, at all, and it would, wouldn't be any different than... Uh, uh, if Americans went uh, overseas and did something and they tried to connect it to the American government, you've got to be able to prove it, and there's, there, is no, there, there, there is no proof there. Jim, let's bring it back home for a few moments, if you would. This election, the presidential election, I have never seen so much turmoil, strife, name-calling. You can go right down the list as there is now in this uh, primary season. What would you tell your constituents about the state of politics in this country and how serious it is that we make a right choice in November? You know, um... (laughs) That, that, that's a, that is a re- really difficult one for me at this point because, as you know, I've been in this, this my first election was 1970. I've run 34 times. Um, I've been in public service uh, virtually all my adult life, most of it part-time, uh, now full-time. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And it's, I, I think it's the result of the frustration and the anger that a lot of us harbor for, uh, for what's going on in our country or not going on in our country. And, um, you know, I don't, I, I don't have uh, the wisdom of Solomon to tell you what, uh, what to do here. I mean, you are right. It is absolutely critical that uh, we make the right decision in November. I'm not sure that we're going to be presented with a, uh, uh, with a choice that uh, is going to be a, a good choice. So I, I'm, I'm, we've got to get a little further down the road before I completely speak my mind on this, but I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted with the whole thing, to be honest with you. And, uh, this was our, this was our, this was the Republicans, uh, chance to win this with Hillary Clinton on the other side. And, uh, I'm not sure, uh, that uh, the candidates we have can do that. Yes, I know there are apostles out there that say, oh, you're wrong. We can do this. But look, I, <laughs> I've seen polling. Donald Trump's polling with women is 75%, 78% unfavorable. All women, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, you lump them together, he's got 78% um, disapproval rating. You can't win a presidential election like that. And I know people say, yes, you can, yes, you can. I, I just, I'm a pragmatist. And uh, regardless of what you think, uh, uh, whether you like him, not like him, like what he says, not like what he says, those numbers, uh, I wouldn't want to be running with, and uh, and I, I just don't, I, I don't believe in miracles, and uh, uh, in this business there are no miracles. So uh, I. I just, I, I'm, I'm just disgusted with the whole thing. I really am. Let me ask you last question, Jim. What's on your plate that you want the audience, your constituents here in Idaho, to know that you're working on and that you're on top of? Give us some of the items that you'd like to elaborate on. Well, I, you know, we don't really have time to go into all of them, but let me let me say that uh, I'm going to be chairman of the Small Business Committee come the first of the year. Um, rules and regulations in America are stifling and killing business, big business, medium business, but especially small business. And uh, one of my focus on uh, when I become chairman of the Small Business Committee is going to be on a little-known agency within the SBA called the Office of Advocacy, 
whose job it is is to punch the administration in the nose every time they come up with an idea that punishes small businesses. And uh, they're um, right now they don't have the resources that they need, and they also don't have the protection that they need, and I'm going to work on that. Another thing that Senator Crippen and I are both working on is uh, I'm on the Energy Committee. In fact, I'm, I'm chairman of the uh, subcommittee um, uh, on uh, energy. And uh, I um, have been pursuing uh, nuclear energy. I mean, nuclear energy is, uh, is the wave of the future. You know, our, our country is so far behind other countries on this. We've got 103, I think, operating nuclear plants today. Uh, there's countries that are much smaller than ours that, uh, that have many more plants than that operating. It's, it's the energy of the future. Whether people like it or not, that's what they're going to be relying on. I don't play an important role in that with uh, the role of the INL, and uh, we're doing uh, things to uh, um, advance the uh, uh, nuclear energy uh, uh, issue f uh, further and to uh, work with uh, developing the next generation of nuclear plants, which will probably be smaller and more portable than uh, than what uh, what's being done today. So those are just a couple of things uh, uh, on the front of my uh, on my plate right now that are, that are important to Idaho. Absolutely, I want to say thank you very much, sir, for taking the time to come on our program this morning. United States Senator Jim Risch always welcomed on this program as a straight shooter. God bless you, sir. Thanks, and come back soon. Thanks, and thanks for what you do. All right, sir. Thank you so much. United States Senator Jim Risch, and I feel very uh, honored to have him call in this morning and address some of the issue questions that are going on, and uh, I thank him. And we're going to have he and uh, Mike Crapo on much more often on this program. It is time for the weather, and then I'm going to take, right after the weather, I'm going to start taking some more of your calls. Come on, give me a call and talk about anything you want to talk about this morning. And uh, we'll kind of leave it an open forum for you to pick the topic and give me a jingle. I want to remind you that Ramsey Heating and Electric can offer rebates on qualified Linux home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Yes, you will. Ramsey Heating and Electric has been a Linux independent dealer for over 50 years. Call them at 678-0459 and learn about Linux at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Here's the lovely Gina with the weather. Let's take a look at the weather as we are moving and grooving through the work week. Looks like sunny skies for today. A little bit on the soft and breezy side, which is going to be nice. High of 76, overnight low of 46. Tomorrow going to be the best day. Mostly sunny skies. Winds out of the southeast right around 11 miles an hour. Expect a high of 80, overnight low of 47. Now, winds are picking up on Friday. Partly cloudy skies. Uh, winds out of the southeast right around 21 miles an hour, high of 80 with an overnight low of 56. Saturday, a complete game changer. Rain showers. It is going to be windy out of the southwest right around 22 miles an hour. Only a high of 57 is what we're expecting for Saturday with an overnight low of 40. And then for Sunday, partly cloudy, windy, and 62. Yesterday's high was 70. The overnight low was 34. That is your weather for Zebit the Ranch. Wow. It's going to drop off a hill on Saturday, they said, temperature-wise. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. Thank you, Gina. Great weather the forecast brought to everybody by Linux at, of course, Ramsey Heating and Electric, offering rebates on qualified Linux home comfort systems, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, and Linux saving you money. Now it's your turn. Come on, go to the telephone, pick it up, dial 436-2244, and give me a call, and let me know what your thoughts are on various subjects that we've talked about this morning, or something new. I mentioned something to Dave Beagle, and I really, this bugs me. I, this is one of my pet peeves, that there is a forcing right now, and under the table rippling effect of you will hire certain people of certain races, or you will hire or consider, and we're going to strong arm tactic you, you will consider hiring women to be coaches in the NBA and managers in the Major League Baseball ranks. Or even the NFL. Wait a minute. I'm drawing the line. I am drawing the line. I don't care if any women get mad at me. I couldn't care less. There is a distinct difference 
between the coaching, the ability, the personalities, the acceptance, all the other little pitfalls that can come up by forcing this issue. You know, I just find it absolutely demeaning to women to be standing on the steps of a major league baseball dugout. Some of the language, some of the attitudes, it's just not the place. And why are we always coerced to accept the women into men's organized sports and other situations, but not the reverse? You know, what are they pushing for? What are they pushing for? A unisex society on third base, here's Janie Smith, second base. You know why? They've got their own Title IX. They've got their own sporting associations. And when I say they, I'm not trying to be derogatory. I mean women and girls' sports. But this infiltration by pushing... And saying, yeah, well, in the future, uh, we're going to have Major League Baseball managers that are women. No, they shouldn't be. No, they shouldn't be. And then they were bragging a little bit ago about uh, ESPN hiring a female analyst for Major League Baseball. If they want to hire a female analyst for the softball, the ladies' softball tournaments that are on television, fine. I don't care. But you know what? I'm not going to advocate that you will, thou shalt, in other words, have to hire women for these different events. You know, there are men's events and there are ladies' events. There are things that need to not be breached as far as a commingling in between. And like a lady, a female, being a major league baseball manager of the Cubs, the Indians, the Royals, whatever, give me a break. What are your thoughts? Give me a jingle. And the other side of that coin is on color and race. This coerciveness and arm twisting again now. Oh, wait a minute. We looked and, uh, oh, gee, there are only three black coaches or there are only five black managers. We've got to get those numbers up. Let's start hiring people on ability and not just because of their race. Your thoughts. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. I got big shoulders. I can take it. 436-224-1866-927-4587. I am so sick and tired of this uh, coerced and forced society. A unisex society? No. Absolutely not. When you think about life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, absolutely sit down and remember Cameron and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. They are very thoughtful and caring in their recommendations on how to protect you, your business, and your family. Please give them a call at 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. Really, really nice people and extremely qualified. Let's see what else have we got here. Come on, give me a call on that situation. Maybe you disagree. And if you do, tell me so. But I just think we are seeing more of a push with the, like I'll go back and use this word again, the unisex society. Everybody's the same. There is no gender. Blah, humbug. That's not the way it should be. Your thoughts, come on, don't weaken on me. Cutting Edge Curving, don't forget they're located at 424 16th Street in Rupert. Two numbers to call, 808-3360 or 260-2583. And boy, this Cutting Edge Curbing, they provide curbing that will really add beauty and value to your property. And it can be either a slant, a mower's edge, a square, or a dome top. And it comes in the different stamping of cobblestone, slate, basket weave. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful in different colors, too. Call Sarah or Mike Baxter today for an estimate at Cutting Edge Curbing, 808-3360. Caller, thank you for your time. Go ahead. You're on the air. Talk to me, caller. Hello. Can you hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Just a thought. You know, you're talking about the things they require. How about if they went back and said that... 50% 50% of every basketball team has to be white. Okay, I agree with you. You're looking at abilities, who can play, who can do what, who can yeah. coach, who can manage, similar. I'm going to hang up and listen. 
Well, I, uh, first of all, I want to say this to the caller. Caller number two, stand by. I have griped about this for a long time on my radio program, and I'm going to continue to gripe about it, and I've written about it in my blog. How dare the people always say, well, the inequities of numbers, the inequity of race, etc. You look at the NBA, and I'll tell you what, at any given time, any given game, you're going to see nothing but ten black players on the floor. Now, I agree with the caller. Well, then let's say 50-50. It's got to be that way. But the reverse doesn't work for Caucasians. It doesn't work because nobody's listening. Caller number two, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, I think the respect level would be a thing, not because of gender, but because most of those managers on the sidelines, uh, 90% of them, played that game and earned their spot. So you're you're going to tell me that they're going to bring a female in there that that hasn't been there, done that, and get the respect that that they get, and it qualified for the job, whatever. Well, it's a- absolutely ridiculous for me to think of a five foot two, blonde haired little beauty standing there on the sideline at an NFL game, and when a six eight pulling guard weighing three hundred and ninety pounds is going to get chewed out by that little lady, give me a break. Yeah, no, this, this the respect level I think would would just be the thing. Everybody has their place in life, and that's not theirs. I don't believe, and I'm not trying to be evil or anything, but. You have a great day, and everybody out there have a great day. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. I I still go back that there is somewhere, somehow, these little deviates sitting behind closed doors that are going, Oh, goody, 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 we're creating a unisex society. No more gender, no more rules. Everybody can play where they want to. Everybody can go to the bathroom they want to. Everybody can join this. This is insane. This is insane, and it's happening. And as far as putting women into the dugouts or on the sidelines, and there's already a female coach for the NBA San Antonio Spurs, and I'm against it. She wants to coach? Great. You've got the WNBA. But leave male sports alone and vice versa. And the minute I said that, the Incredible Hulk just walked in the door with the auto official. You can get up to that microphone. You played sports for Utah State and everything else. What do you, honestly, and I want an honest opinion. This is not fish and game opinion. This is Kelton Hatch's opinion. Your microphone's on. That's dangerous. This, this movement right now that's going on in this country to make and force women to be, maybe become coaches in the NBA, maybe to become managers in Major League Baseball. I think it's absolutely insane. Your thoughts, quickly. Um, I think the best person for the job ought to do it, regardless of... Regardless of gender? Regardless of gender or whatever. If I think you're the, wrong. If they're the very best person at it to do it, and I just don't think there'll be that big of a push. I don't think you'll see any change from right now. Um, I think you're wrong because it's already happened. Well, you know, I, I don't But know. wait a minute. Would you really honestly? I guess I look at back. I had applied for some jobs um, oh, 20 years ago, and they stepped over 15 candidates before they hired the one that they did because of these equal rights type hirings and stuff like that. And I have no problem being beat out by somebody that's better than me. If they're qualified. If they're qualified. But not on race or gender. Not on race or gender. I don't care who it is. If they're better than me at that job and they deserve that job, they ought to get it. Because I think that levels the playing field for everybody. But to force people into jobs because of race and gender, that's wrong. Well, totally. And, I mean, that's why a couple of my friends had quit some of the management jobs at some of these bigger uh, uh, newspapers is because they were forced to hire people that they didn't want. Yeah. And they'd have to go 15, 16, 18 deep into the hiring pool, skipping over other candidates because they didn't fit the mold that they were looking for. Good morning, Kel. Nice to have you here. Did yeah. you bring my new cap? I didn't. Ah, thank you. Yeah. How kind but of I you. But I brought you something so you can read it. What did you I, do I, quickly? I, I got 10 seconds I, left I here. I put it in really big, t- big print for Double. No, it's triple spaced. Double. Oh, okay. It looked good. We got a lot of good things to talk about, though, today. Looking forward to it next hour. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to Wheels at our main station. He's got these good words and CBS News. Wheels, take it away. 
Oh, wow. I'm telling you what, my lovely bride stepped into the studio during the break and offered Kelton and I a cookie. My favorite sugar cookies. I love them. Thank you. Welcome back to Zebeth Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services, always at your disposal, 734-6969. want to remind you, Shirley Halford Hubbard, is running for Cache County Commissioner, District 3. This lady was born and raised in Oakley, moved to Burley, and she just loves interacting with people in the county. And she said they need to address the younger generation and get them more active in the leadership of Cassia County because they'll be the leaders of tomorrow. Don't forget when you go to the polls for the primary on May 17th, vote for Shirley Halford Hubbard for Cassia County Commissioner District 3, paid for by the committee for Halford Hubbard for County Commissioner District 3, Lois Reinhardt, Treasurer. Also, quickly, I want to remind you about Scott Yates. i got to turn the paper here. Hold on. Turning the paper twice back to the front. There we go. Scott Yates is running for Cache County Sheriff. And don't forget he's going to have... An open house meeting tomorrow night, Thursday night, April 21st, at the Golden Heritage Burley Senior Center between 7 and 9 p.m. You can get to know him, ask questions, and find out why he wants to be your Cassia County Sheriff. Or you can call him at 432-2221. Scott Yates running for Cassia County Sheriff, paid for by the Yates for Cassia County Sheriff Committee, Julie Jaime, the Treasurer. Well, lo and behold, and I mean that, lo and behold, look who we found walking down Highway 30. We offered him some vittles. He came in to eat, and here he is with the Idaho Fishing Game, Kelton Your, your wife ought, offered me some vittles. I'd starve to death if it was for you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I can't argue with the truth. So how you been? You know, real. It's. I love spring. Turn that microphone up. Just tip it up just a little bit more. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got these pygmy type. Well, micro- yeah, but I mean, not everybody comes in here can rip their clothing like the Incredible yeah, Hulk. Oh, I yeah. mean, holy smokes! Yeah, it's just. Yeah. What have you been up to for a month? For a month, well, lots and different things. Probably the. Um, one I didn't the, mean one to the, stump the well, stars. Well, I know, but I'm trying to sit in here thinking. One of the, probably one of the funnest thing I get to do is go out and I've been checking sage grouse legs. Really? And uh, kind of watching them dance. lure the ladies. Huh? Lure the ladies. Do the jig. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh-huh. No, I've been up in Goose Creek. Um, Good numbers on the sage grouse. I've got one lek up there that had as. It many. wasn't that long ago you were on this program and were worried about the numbers. No, well, you're mm. always worried about them because you, you you see just weird glitches. And I mean, I, the last thing we want to do is see sage grouse numbers deplete anymore, or, or yeah. for whatever you know. There's so many habitat issues going on right now with weeds, and you know you've got West Nile and you've got tons of other things affecting these these birds. But no, my one lek had 35. Uh, out, out on four lakhs or 70 mils dancing. Is that good? Yeah, well, yeah, that's quite a, I mean, really? it's good. I a mean, lot of dancing going on. A lot of dancing, a lot of jigging. Who, who yeah. supplies the music for that? Uh, they do. I see. <laughs> they, they they provide their own. And so that's been pretty cool. The sage, the sharp tail are out doing their jigs. Sage too. Grouse 5. They, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a skinny, that's a pretty small lek if there's only five. <laughs> you know, we like that. That's we, the band, uh, not that's head. The, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and then the uh, Sharp teller doing the same thing, so a lot, lot of jigging going on right now. Really? So, um, so you've been out counting birds? Been out counting birds, yeah. You like that. You, you know, are a there. lonely person, aren't you? I, well, you know, there's. <laughs> this sounds weird, but it's really nice to be able to get up at 5 in the morning, take off down some of these backcountry roads and be the only person out there. Really? And just, yeah. You know, you did invite me to that three years ago. I know. And, and you still haven't called. You don't get up early enough in the morning to beat me up. So, well, no, because you're, you know, well, once you hit a certain age, you just don't sleep anymore, do you? That's true. <laughs> no, <it's> all, <laughs> but, no, you're more than welcome. Anytime you want to go out and see those, I'd, I'd be happy to take you out. Uh, so the sage grouse and the sharp grouse mm-hmm. are doing well. They are. The numbers are looking good. I mean, with this... You know, I think that it looks like they're nesting earlier this year, um, just because we had 
a really nice spring. It's been lots of moisture. Um, we've got a lot of birds on nests right now, and uh, we're anticipating a good hatch. If we can get some, uh, I mean, we had just a tremendous hatch last year on all the game birds, and lots of birds uh, increased numbers in sage grouse and stuff from what we're seeing on the on the elect counts. And we're anticipating if we can get you know a good two week window is what we need. Is once those eggs hatch, we need a couple weeks of decent weather without lots of freezing rain and snow. <laughs> so those chicks can survive, and uh, that's one thing about bird populations. They can bounce back really quick. You have two birds and have 12 chicks. I mean... I would like to see one bird population go into non-existence. And which one's that? Starlings. Starlings. Oh, well. I hate them. Well, they love you, evidently. They get in my pickup <laughs> and have caused problems for three years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Up in the engine, building nests. I, I've never heard of that. I've heard of pack rats. Really? I've heard of mice. That's but I've what never caused of... the fire in my pickup three years well, ago. That's true. Yeah. What are you doing? Sprinkling bird seed? No, I found <laughs> out a way to get rid of them, and it's it's uh, a, a BB all gun. The, no, all the humane people are probably going to come through the wall, but you can get these uh, heavy duty manufactured type sticky strips. They're about maybe a foot long and about eight inches wide, and you lay those carefully in the engine where they like to jump up on and oh. they stick themselves and they ain't going to unstick themselves. And then you unstick them and turn them loose and clean their feet off and let them fly away. I know that's the kind of guy you are, Zeb. <laughs> All I'll say to that is, you want to bet? <laughs> okay. Hey, by the way, I didn't give you a proper introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Zebeth Ranch, we are always honored and humbled every month to have Kelton Hatch with the Idaho Fishing Game come on our program and uh, just absolutely give us great visions for the future of fish and wildlife and uh, educate us. Go ahead. What do you have in your coffee this morning? Wasn't enough. <laughs> so <laughs> wasn't enough. What about the general bear and turkey season opening? You know, bear, bear season kicked off uh, the 15th. We got a lot of folks out this year. Bear numbers are, you know, we have a lot of hunting in Idaho, um, and it, it's amazing to me how many of these other states don't have that opportunity opportunity to hunt bears. But you know, if a person's interested in getting out and stretching their legs and doing a little bit of look around, you know, just, just need to head up north and, and start their bear hunting. Um, the general over the or, over the counter bears. You can actually go into the Middle Fork or the Frank Church or any of that area, and you can get two bear tags and uh, for something to do this spring, or you can run up north and hunt turkeys, and you can kill up to two turkeys. You know, I'm about bear hunting, um, is it dangerous to be a bear hunter? You've done it. No. no. Uh, bear hunting to me is... It, it, it's it's really a laid-back hunt. Really? You, yeah, you get... It's some, not like mountain lion hunting or anything? Well, you know, I don't run them with dogs. I've never been a... I, I hound hunt quite a bit for mountain lions in, in the past, but I was never a big hound hunter on bears. I had a bunch of buddies who were, but it was just always such an ordeal. Because, like, with mountain lions, I can run one or two dogs and tree a mountain lion. Okay. When you're chasing bears, you have to get your bait side. Oh, 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 oh. when you're chasing bears. Now, normally... When you're chasing would, bears with a dog. I know, but I would think uh, the reverse, like in the Jeremiah Johnson movie, when, the bear chasing... Yeah, I hear, skin this one, Pilgrim, and I'll yeah. go get you another one. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a little different, because you usually have seven to nine or more dogs. So it's always good to go bear hunting with a dog. With lots of dogs. Lots of dogs. Because dogs, uh, bears like to ground, ground tree, and, and they'll turn and fight. Really? And so if you got more dogs that... Eliminates injury to the dogs typically if you got enough dogs to keep the bear entertained. But bears will run forever, and it's just a big ordeal because usually they put out a bait site so that the bears come into that. Then you they don't bring their look like you're in the shape to run with the bears. Uh, you do the walk, and the dogs do the run. You just hike all day. Are they mostly black bears? Yeah, well, yeah, we chase black bears, but the thing is, a lot of people don't understand that black bears come in. You know, every color that of people's hair that didn't come out of a bottle, <laughs> a black bear can be that no, color. No, whoa, 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 you're confusing it me. It can't be purple or and blue I'm easily, or stuff like that. And I'm easily confused. <laughs> you know you're that, mean you, to telling me. You see that, that little purple stripe in your hair that you've got, that you dyed last week? Bears can't have that. Well, first of all, <laughs> audience that knows me, there is no purple. There's a lot of gray up there. But no, seriously, a black bear is kind of a... Can be brown, can be blonde. Well, then why do they call them blonde bears? Well, they are a blonde black bear. 
It's not necessarily. Do you realize color. how that sounds to the audience? I do, but it's not necessarily color. That's their that's their name is black bear. Black bears. And most of them in Idaho, there's a lot of black black bears. But, but they're blonde and redheads. Blonde and, and redheads and brunettes and the whole. So why yards. don't they just call them? I shot a red bear. Well, you can. But it's not really a black bear. Well, it's a black bear. That's what red. are the hygienic or not hygienic, but the uh, if genetics look, behind having a black bear be a blonde bear? If you look in the books, it is named black bear. That's its that's its species name, and maybe I it's a grizzly. Well, a grizzly bear is a grizzly bear, or a brown bear, or a uh, Kodiak. You know your stuff, don't you, Hatch? I, I, I do. <laughs> but, but no, they can come in a lot of different colors, and that, and that's one thing a lot of hunters will do. I mean, after they've harvested one or two black bears, then they'll start looking for different color phases uh, of the black bear. Sure. Different carpet on the floor. Well, different for the you hanging on the wall, you bet. Yeah. And so it gives you. I've got, I've got a buddy that's got one of. He's got five different bears, all different color. Fruits. Really, isn't that nice? It is. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like you and your belt buckles. You got one of different colors over there. I do there. all kinds of them. Oh, I got to pay some bills here real quick, man, and then we'll man, get back. You did drink something this morning. <laughs> well, you're making no sense that a blonde bear can be a black bear. And there's a joke there, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> anyway, don't forget your Lennox home comfort systems through our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Offerland Overland Avenue in Burley. You got me all mixed up now. It wasn't hard to do. Well, how how much is your quarter horse worth then? Uh, 50 cents right now. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. Whether it's gas furnaces, air conditioners, or heat pumps, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 and find out how they can save you money on Linux. Call today. Also, real quick, uh, before we go any further, I want to remind you that Mother's Day is looming right around the corner, and we've got some great sponsors for Mother's Day, like the Goody Shop at 133 West Main in Burley. Oh my goodness, treat your mom to a goodie basket. You can build one, tell everybody what you want in it and everything, and they come with special Mother's Day mugs, too, that can be filled with candy, kisses, brownie treats. Oh, it's fantastic. Everything they do at the Goody Shop is delicious. What a great treat for mom from the goodie shop at 133 West Main and Burley 647-0106 and happy Mother's Day from Magic Valley Irrigation at 44 East 500 South of Burley Magic Valley Irrigation and Jeff would like to wish all the moms in the audience a happy Mother's Day that's nice Jeff way to go and uh, for all your irrigation needs don't forget Magic Valley Irrigation give them a call today at 678-3101 and they celebrate Mother's Day there you go all right moving along White nose syndrome for bats. That's what you've got, is white nose, that gray mustache. So, in other words, there's something white on a Hillary Bradsby, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. We, we're just trying to warn folks out there, uh, or get people's, uh, if they find a bunch of dead bats on their place, Ooh, or if they... Not good. If... Um, they see any weird behavior stuff. Give us a give us a holler at the office. They just discovered white nose syndrome. What is white nose? It, it's syndrome? a fungus that gets in them. Uh, it, it's a disease that gets in bat populations, usually in hibernaculars where they spend the winter. And in hibernaculars, what? Naculars. What's that? Their home for the winter, like out in out in caves and stuff like that. Oh. In parts of uh, Washington, they've actually are starting to. Uh, not let people go splunking or go caving because they're afraid that they'll go into one cave, get this disease on them, go into another cave and transmit this. How is it transmitted? Well, you can get it on your clothing and stuff like You're that. You're talking about bat doo-doo. Yeah, or bumping into the bats or on some of the cave walls. It'll it'll carry if a bat's crawled across it and people are cl- climbing around in there. Can people get it? No, but it does. And the thing is, is people go, well, it just it kills a bunch of bats. Well, a bunch of bats are really important. Um, an average bat will kill a 1,000 uh, mosquito-sized insects a night. A 1,000? A 1,000. So it's good to have bats in your belfry. You want to have lots of bats in your belfry. Right. You know, especially, you know... It, it saves, uh, what do they say, um, it's an estimated $313 million in pesticide control that it saves 
or in pests and, and problems like that, that bats save Idaho, just Idaho, each year. Really? And so that's how important they are for the agricultural community, for us just living around our places and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, if you see anything going on with bats um, or any problems, if you see them with, if they... Uh, have you don't want to grab them and stuff like that? Or no, them. they'll bite you. They could, and so um, it's hard but, to grab a bat, though, isn't it? I've netted them before, really? but that's when I was young and dumb, uh-huh. and so some things never change. Yeah, last month, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, you, you be careful around. Them, but give us a holler if you if you see anything weird going on with bats around what your is, place. What, or is, what kind of symptoms do they have? Well, they'll get. Uh, a fungus like on their uh, or open or lesions so sores. it really is a white nose it, it can usually it's really tr- gone a long ways by the and they're really close to death if their nose gets white or they get white on their different appendages usually it starts out if you find a bat and it's got open lesions and stuff sores on its uh, on its wings or legs or really anything like that and it, it but we need to know about it so we've never documented a case of it in idaho but Washington has it now, so I'm guessing it's not too far out. Okay, well, where did it come from? Um, it's just a disease that's been working its way from the coast. From? And it's, if you're in Mississippi and stuff like that, it's on the east east of the Mississippi and um, in Washington State now, basically. Really? Mm-hmm. Holy smokes. And so it's dangerous to the bat population. It's very dangerous. To and the not bat dangerous to human beings. No. And we've got, we've got our non-game biologist, uh, Ross Winton. He's been... Um, climbing into a bunch of caves this winter. Testing the guy is it. nuts. I wouldn't yeah. climb into a cave for anything. <laughs> you know, well, he, he's he gone through he about He really 20. does like that? Yeah, I think he kind of enjoys that part of Have it. Have you ever climbed into a cave? Big ones. I don't climb into ones that, you know, like well, you need a, a, fat, a, a fat man's nightmare cave or something yeah. like that. You know, oh. I don't want that. But if, if I can stand up vertical, I don't mind walking in them. But if I'm crunched over, I'm a kind of a claustrophobic. Get kind around. of? Yeah. I can't get in anything like that. Yeah, you get, around, you get around too many people or into, Ooh. you know. My pickup has to have the window rolled down, so. I know. <laughs> but really, you, you bats, don't they bother you a little bit because of the fear of rabies and everything? Not at all. I really? grew up. I mean, where I was at on the ranch, we had we had lots of bats around, and no, they, they've never really bothered me. Really, unless they're in the house with you, and then they kind of make me a little bit nervous. Yeah, they if could. They're outside. My grandmother had a ton of them in in her in her roof in the in the summer, Ooh. and then they would move and go up to a cave or something yeah. in the winter. But they uh, really are an ugly creature. They are, but they eat a thousand insects a night yeah. per little brown bat and so uh that that they're they're pretty beneficial to you okay just think how many skeeters you'd have around here if you didn't have bats tell you what uh, appreciate what they do i'll go out and thank them tonight they're okay. out in the barn okay <laughs> uh what about spring fishing chinook season to open take me fishing trailer, trailer. oh by the way mcgargle Take me fishing. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Never well, going to happen. Hey, it's, it's time to get out and do some. Right now, the lakes are just turning on red hot. Hotter than a $2 pistol, I guess. You know, really? Walcott, they, if you have, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. We've got a Facebook page. You're going way to the bottom. I am. But I'm going to, this, I'm, I'm circling back around to the fishing report. Um, we've, we've got, we get a weekly fishing report from our officers that we publish on our Facebook page. It's Fish and Game Magic Valley. Oh boy, there's a it, there's an innovative title. I know, but hey, it makes it easy for me to remember it. And so, it's Fish and Game Magic Valley. We've also been publishing some photos of local anglers that have caught some fish. We had a guy that caught a lunker out of Walcott last week. Salmon Falls Creek has been fishing really, really well. Um, Walcott is, uh, I mean not Walcott, uh, Oakley Reservoir has been starting to warm up a little bit and fishing better. And so right now, if you're looking for those big rainbow, it's time to hit those lakes. Big like in how big? Oh, we've had a few that have been up in that 28. Oh. You know. Uh, that would be, what, a nine, seven or eight, nine pounder? Yeah, we've had uh, one was over nine pounds that some oh. guys caught. Um, Anderson Ranch Reservoir right now, they're just killing the kokanee. And the kokanee are that 18 to 20 inch range, and that's oh a monster kokanee. Yeah. You know, and so they're catching them in about 25 foot of water. 
um, and so people they usually typically use downriggers for them, and the fish are up up a little bit right now, so you can catch them in that 25 foot range. But you know it's supposed to be 80 degrees today, and I think things are just going to just ignite for for lake fishing. Yeah, and you probably won't be able to get near your stream where you usually fish uh, for another month or so until the snow melts and out. And you better things are running black right now. Yeah, and you better get a license. You need to get your license. Yep, run to your local vendor and pick up your fishing license. Okay. Now, let's revert back up to the yeah. top of the well, page again and, and the Take Me Fishing Trailer. Yep, we got the Take Me Fishing Trailer. We've got the, uh, our little bookmarks out. Our first big event is going to be June 4th yep. for that. But if you don't find a bookmark at your uh, mostly, a lot of the kids will be getting them in school in some of the areas. Um, you can go onto our fishing game website and you can and see the events. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different events uh, wow. this summer. If you've got a scout group, a uh, Girl Scout group, um, whatever type of youth organization you have, or if you're just looking at play, something to do with your kids, you know. Come to the Take Me Fishing trailer. It allows you to fish for free Yep. that day. You don't have to have a fishing license. You just come, sign up. You can borrow our fishing gear, and uh, we'll have bait there. We'll have people on hand to help kind of instruct you how to do it. What about paramedics to remove the hooks from the ears? Yeah, that, that we don't have that. I <laughs> so, but... Um, I, I, I have done that a couple of times before. You know, when we were over there that day at Rocky's Pond. Oh, yeah. And I was way at the other end of that pond, and here comes a little boy. And for some reason, he just wanted to fish within eight inches of my right arm. Well, he says, you know, he's catching fish. And I didn't that. catch anything. <laughs> but anyway, he takes that rod and reel, and he just takes and twists way back this way. And you could tell he was going to give it the old heave hole. The only thing that was wrong with that little boy's application was that he forgot to push the button all the way. And he wrapped the worm and the leader and the weights and the hook right around my ears. I did not know who the child's parents were, but he almost didn't make it home that night. <laughs> That's why you wear your Stetson. You got to have your big old hat on so that you, instead of keeping the you know the side walls up, you, you turn them turn down them down. And, down and wrap them around your ears and your cheek. But it's been pretty successful that free fishing in the trailer, hasn't it? You know, it's been amazing. We take about thirty five hundred kids fishing a year. Wow! Between the Take Me Fishing trailer and then the trout in the trout in the classroom program, we've we've got a group of kids from over there in Burley and Declo looks like they may be coming on board and we're going to we're working with Oakley right now trying to get uh, one over there too and so hopefully we can get this uh, program spread out a little bit more and get more kids fishing it's amazing to me when I was a kid that was you know it was between uh, I mean yeah fishing was a babysitter basically yeah but we had a creek that ran through the place and so you'd get on your horse and you'd ride down to the creek and yeah. you'd go fishing for the day and so uh but a lot of kids when i walk into a school um and talk to them you may have a school like murtaugh that only has 25 percent of the students that have ever had a fishing pole in their hand in really? some of the classes wow. you run into that and then you'll run into other schools that will be you know, I, that happened a few years back when it was in Murtaugh that had 25%. A lot of schools never have more than 30% of the kids that have ever been fishing. And I said, my heavens, we live in Idaho. We don't live in downtown New York City or something like that. I mean, most of these kids should have the opportunity to catch a fish. But, um, you know, and that's why we run the programs. Just try to get fishing poles in kids' hands and get them outside and get them doing something. And, and i got to compliment you in all seriousness. You and other members of the fishing game that are involved in that, I have been there. I've seen the interaction with these kids, and you folks are great. Well, thank you. You're welcome. See, that's a good compliment. You did drink a lot this morning. <laughs> <laughs> right now, before we turn it back over to wheels, I want to remind everybody, Kelly Anthon, Idaho State Senator, wants your vote for re-election. And he has a strong voice for agriculture and a proven record of success in economic development and believes in prosperity and a result of limited, predictable, and efficient government. And the right to speak freely, bear arms, and practice your religion must be defended. Kelly has done a great job, and he has a unique ability to represent the entire Minicasha area. Don't forget on May 17th, vote for Kelly Anthon for Idaho State Senator, paid for by the re-elect Kelly Anthon. 
Marathon State Senator Committee, Elaine Stevenson, Treasurer. One more quick note before I send it over to Wheels. I want to remind you that Cliff Katona is running for Twin Falls County Sheriff, and he wants your vote on May 17th. This man has been 28 years of distinguished law enforcement service for the state of Idaho and has been on many, many civic boards, including SPAN, the Suicide Prevention Action Network, and a member of the Idaho State Police Association. He wants to be a visible sheriff in the community addressing people's concerns. Don't forget to vote May 17th for Cliff Katona for Twin Falls County Sheriff, paid for by the Katona for Twin Falls County Sheriff Committee, Jim Woolley Chairman. Here now is Wheels at our main studio. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. And thank you very much. Welcome back. Don't forget, on Thursdays, twice a month, we're going to have our Second Amendment. Brought to you by Red Straighting Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Ryan and Horsley and the rest of the crew, they have got all the new firearms all the major gun manufacturers, all the ammunition and accessories for you at Red Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. And also, don't forget, Jay Hewitt of Cashew County wants to be reelected as your county sheriff. He's been in the police business for over 36 years and has the knowledge of the job through experience and very hard work. Cashew County Emergency Manager Jay knows what to do, and he wants wants to always remind you he's working for you and he knows his constitutional responsibilities. Don't forget to re-elect a sheriff you can depend on in any circumstance. Vote May 17th to re-elect J. Heward, Cashew County Sheriff, paid for by the committee for Heward for County Sheriff in Cashew County, Steve Westfall, Treasurer. We're back on the air with my dear friend, the wonderful, always talented, very vocal and knowledgeable about all the issues. What was your name again? Uh, Kelton Hatch. There you go. I got to turn your mic on. And uh, we were talking about spring fishing and the Take Me Fishing trailer. Anything else on spring fishing? You know, uh, Chinook season opens up this next week, and so uh, it's uh, it's on Saturday. I'm not a huge uh, Chinook fisherman, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but really? if you need more information, those people that are after Get a hold of McGargle. Yeah. <laughs> He'll take you fishing. <laughs> <laughs> what about, okay, trophy applications, what, for Little League Baseball or what? What are you talking about? For moose. Oh. Bighorn sheep and mountain goat. I see. Ends at the end of the month, so if you're interested in doing that, it's time to apply now. However, just for those new folks that are thinking of putting in for a moose, if you put in for a moose or, or a bighorn sheep or a mountain goat, that means you cannot apply for deer, elk, or antelope, which you do because you forget to apply. Yes. But <laughs> for, uh, my wife gets mad at me because I remember things for a long time. And so <laughs> I'd call it carrying a grudge, quite frankly. And so... Um, but it, it is time that time of year to get out there and get those apl- applications in. Now, when do I have to get my license? That, that's coming up too, does isn't it? You didn't get it. Well, you can't get it now. It's too late. Or you're not telling me the <laughs> truth. You just have to get your hunting license before you apply for your deer tag. Yeah, I got to get my in deer May. tags in May. May. Would you remind me next month? Well, I, I did last time. It didn't do any good. I know. <laughs> For God, so. so next next month is going to be May already. Yeah, May June. The ends the application goes till June fifth. June fifth. So okay, I don't want thirty six days year. to do it. So. All right. So the trophy applications. The trophy applications are due right now. What about the survival during the winter of our deer and elk? Were you satisfied with the numbers that made it through? You know, and the reason I brought this up, I'm going to, we've been getting kicked around a bit about, uh, we had a feed site up in in, uh, the Wood River Valley. Um, It was uh, in Warm Springs, and we had about, we, from our, from our, tallies up there when we quit feeding on the 15th of April we had 33 animals that had died um, 11th from mountain lion and the rest were the 22 were died of malnutrition or blunt force trauma and what the blunt force trauma is is when you get 
we've our permit only allows us to feed on so much of the forest service in that area such a big area and the snow was deep we couldn't get the feed out in much further than we want so when those cows would get in those feed lines with those calves sometimes those calves would get knocked down and get stomped i see and so most everything that we had in there when we was up there feeding uh, were calves um and I was kind of interested to see what was going on. We had about 180 uh, elk in that feedlot, and so I was kind of interested to see. We've got a, a radio telemetry program, and what that is is we've got a bunch I've got to of, ask you a question right there. Pardon yeah. my interruption. You're no, talking about an elk feedlot. It was, right. because, and the only reason, and I should ju- tell you why we have this elk feedlot. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Is because it's in Warm Springs, and those elk come out of... It, out of warm springs out of those mountains and then they migrate right down into catch them right we put that feed site up there to short stop those elk so that they don't migrate into town and get ran over and get into people's shrubs and trees and everything else what about the dependency factor that any animal gets oh, we hate the program because the thing is is those elk would be so much better off if they could migrate to an area that they can feed on at, at a natural site it, it, i mean it's the worst worst thing you can do to big game animals is if you you establish these type of feed sites and we're not vaccinating. I mean, I grew up on a cattle ranch. We vaccinate the animals every a couple times a year. Yeah. And so when the calves are born, you, you give them a, a shot, trying to help them uh, so that they don't get scours and get sick and things like this. Well, you can't do that on a feed site for elk. And so these elk are nose to nose. You've you got a bunch of animals congregated. If disease is going to spread, Boy, you've going got, to, uh, it goes like wildfire through one of those. And you've you got an in-house problem. You do. Boy. And so... And then, it, so it's much better if they can get up on those south-facing slopes in, in winter. I mean, uh, Wyoming's a fine example of it. They've got elk all over, but they've got brucellosis all over the elk winter, all the feeds. So they have to go out with pellet gun or air rifles, and they vaccinate, vaccinate all the, the cow elk calves. They shoot them with bangs vaccination so that they don't have brucellosis and pass it on to their offspring, you know, drop it in their placenta, yeah. abort their calves, uh, their calves early um, so that they don't affect the livestock industry. So now they're in the vaccination business. What there. about the fact, though, that uh, like Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with that great big elk feeding ground mm-hmm. area, uh, again, I go back to the word dependency. Um, I just, it takes away the wild attitude of an animal, I think, if they know that uh, Bobby's going to be there with a bale of hay at 4 o'clock, and they can tell that. And what about going back into the wild and being sustaining for themselves? Does that ever... You know, we've had a couple instances... Uh, you know, we we were feeding a lot of elk up in Big Smoky, up over in the South Fork of the Boise. Because of changes part of it was because of wolves when the wolves were put in there they started pushing those elk out of that country and those elk started migrating out into the camas prairie and over into fairfield we don't feed up there anymore all those elk are migrating well now we got another problem because what's in fairfield tons and tons of haystacks Uh and you got all the ranchers and so now we're building stack yards however it's saving us thousands and thousands of dollars not feeding those elk in a place where they were and the reason we fed them up there is because in this in the 50s the union pacific railroad came in and transplanted elk up there because a lot of their union or their railroad people had came in and harvested the elk had shot them to extinction. Oh my goodness! Pretty much, and so they brought in elk from Yellowstone, put them up there. Well, they did it in the winter. They wanted them to stay in the area and not migrate away, so they started feeding up there in the '50s. So we'd been feeding up there forever. So they did more harm than good. In in some ways, yeah. in some ways, you bet. But we've got a natural migration going on now. Um, we're still trying to manage wolves up in those areas, and I know we're never going to manage wolves to the way some people want it or the other people want it. But we, we've we've in in a lot of these front ranges, we're actually seeing in great increasing elk populations in 43, 48, 49, all those uh, units on either side of Sun Valley. We're actually seeing increasing elk populations, and so th- things are going pretty good for the overall all balance of that. But because of all this stuff that's been going on, all the changes, we've, we've taken, I think, radio transmitters and put them on elk. I see. And deer. And we have 282 radio collars on calf elk 
and 602 on cow elk. Wow. And so we have biologists that listen to the tone on these every week, a couple times a week, to make sure that these animals are alive. The calf elk we do a lot more, but out of 602 cow elk with a radio collar on it, 11 of those died. Really? So that was roughly 2% mortality for the, the cow elk population this year. And it kind of gives us a, a measuring stick to see, you know, we try to assume that this is what's going on with the rest of the elk population. We try to get a large enough sample size that from elk, because we got elk in the Panhandle, Lolo, Dwarshack, Hell's Canyon, Elk City, McCall, Middle Fork, Salmon, Weezer River, Sawtooth just up here, Boise River, the Owyhees, the Lemhi Pioneer Area, Beaverhead, and Diamond Creek. So we've got samples of elk all, from all across the state to combine for this 602 elk. And so 2% of those elk have died. Out of the calves, we're setting at about an eighteen percent mortality. Okay. Which is typical. Yeah. Anytime you have above a fifty percent survive, I mean, if you're at fifty percent survival on elk or deer, you have an increasing elk or deer population. Let me ask you this question, and then I got to do a weather forecast. But have human beings? And your agency, uh, because of demands on your agency with the feeding programs and everything, have we taken the wild out of wild? Yeah. You understand where I'm headed on that? You know, in, in certain instances, we definitely have. You know, we're, we, we have a major impact on wildlife just because we're here. I mean, bears, we, we put down a dozen bears a year because we pe- people leave garbage cans out, they leave their barbecue grills out, they leave food on picnic tables when they're in the hills, and these bears get habituated to food, they come in, we trap 50 plus bears, 50 to 100 bears a year that get into people's yards and then we can typically relocate those. The ones we end up putting down are the ones that are, are so habituated they just come right back. I mean, we'd, we put, trapped a bear a few years ago in Sun Valley, hauled it 150 miles away and a week later it was back in Sun Valley. Oh, wow. And the reason we knew it is because we had the ear tag in its ear and then we retrapped it and it was it was dispatched because it had become, was afraid somebody was going to get hurt. You bet. I mean, We've got these feed sites, and just it, it's weird to see. Um, it's sad for me. It's it's sad because I mean I grew up in a state that had less than a million people, and now we're at about we're double the population of when I was a kid. Yeah. In thirty years, forty years, we've doubled our population, and, and that's and it, all going to have a bearing on wildlife. It does. It all has has you know we could have three times more tags in the South Hills if we had. A quarter of the roads or the opportunity to transport but we don't want that because everybody needs to have an opportunity to get down there and hunt yeah so we reduce the number of tags that's why we can have a general hunt up in unit 49 is because there's not ATV trails and roads on every ridge so there's places for animals to escape people that can get up and down those hills can go over there and hunt and have an opportunity that's what the South Hills we have a you know a it's about a 65% harvest success. So for every 100 tags out there, 65 people harvest a deer, wow. which is really high. That's good. That's really good. high. Yeah. And so uh, when you see that in other states, but you gotta, I've got to do add, a weather forecast. i got one more thing on okay. the pond. So. All right. All right. Go ahead. No, you can do your weather forecast. Well, thank you very much. It's your show. My new, my new it's producer. Your show. <laughs> my new producer, Kelton Hatch. Thank you. I can do it. <laughs> he said I could. Don't forget Tim Derrington running for Cache County Commissioner District 3, a lifelong resident of Cache County, farmer, rancher, steward of the land. And he wants, as your county commissioner, to provide good roads, safe environment, and a great quality of life in Cache County. And he encourages job opportunities, new industry, and smart growth. He wants what is best best for the citizens of Cashia County now and for future generations. Vote for Tim Darrington, Cashia County Commissioner, District 3, May 17th, paid for by Darrington for Commissioner Gail Erickson, Treasurer. We've got to get a weather forecast on in here right now. Scarrows Meats bringing you the weather over in Jerome at 331 North Road, Jerome 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Your hometown meat cutters, Scarrows Meats. Here now is Gina with the weather. 
Let's take a look at the weather as we are moving and grooving through the work week. Looks like sunny skies for today. A little bit on the soft and breezy side, which is going to be nice. High of 76, overnight low of 46. Tomorrow going to be the best day. Mostly sunny skies. Winds out of the southeast right around 11 miles an hour. Expect a high of 80, overnight low of 47. Now, winds are picking up on Friday. Partly cloudy skies. Uh, winds out of the southeast right around 21 miles an hour, high of 80 with an overnight low of 56. Saturday, a complete game changer. Rain showers, it is going to be windy out of the southwest right around 22 miles an hour. Only a high of 57 is what we're expecting for Saturday with an overnight low of 40. And then for Sunday, partly cloudy, windy, and 62. Yesterday's high was 70. The overnight low was 34. That is your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. Uh, Gina, great job on the weather. Thank you. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the rest of the crew at 331 North. Throw Jerome 324 7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. You know, we haven't told you anything else you want to mention, real quick. Well, I wanted to run over the mule deer stats because oh, we was okay. talking about elk. Um, out, of, out of the deer, we've got um, 200, 232 uh, fawns. Radio collared. Okay. And we had mortality of 59, so a 25% fawn mortality. The interesting thing is you really can see it across the state, um, the difference. The highest survival rate in the state right now is right out your back door in, in uh, South Hills. In the South Hills. Really? Four, 54 had, and 55, we, we had, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, we had 26 fawns, <clears throat> radio collared, three have died. So we have a roughly what we're estimating a 12% fawn mortality. Mm-hmm. Um, However, the worst survival in the state has been the Smoky Bennets, and that is the stuff north of Bliss, the animals that live up in 43, 48, 49. And we just got early, early snows up in there. We've got really, really poor winter range conditions, but the biggest thing is, is we had a really high uh, fawn survival the, the last four years. We've got a lot of deer out there, and those fawns, when we was trapping them, were a lot lighter than deer in other parts of the state. One thing we're finding, and we found several years ago, though, is the key to winter survival is good summertime conditions. If they go into the winter fat, um, deer have a much higher likelihood of survival. And, and just on weight, you know, if a fawn is under 70 pounds going into the winter, um, they have very slim margins of, of surviving. Really? If there's 80 pounds, they've got about an 80%, 90% uh, ability to survive. No kidding. So fawns that are born late have a less likelihood of, uh, of surviving the winter because they just don't put the pack the fat on the that on. they need to, need to survive. Okay. So I would, you see, I'm not going to winter kill. Not a chance. <laughs> anyway, let's talk quickly, and then I've got to do another commercial about Steelhead Angler's Pocket Guide. I, I would imagine in that pocket guide, you have one. I brought it for you, Zeb, really? so that you can learn how to catch steelhead. Uh, you know, I've often marveled at these people that are steelheaders. They can bear the elements better than anybody I've ever met. They can, and, you know, they need to if they want to catch those fish. Because really? that's, Yeah, that's the best. When it's cold and the water is running, and clear is when you do the best steelhead. And once you get warm weather like this and it's running black, you have a real rough time catching fish. But this is a really neat guide. They put it together for the Upper Salmon <coughs> River Steelhead Angler's Pocket Guide. So this is for Region 7, up there by Salmon. So if you're a Pissimeroy, North Fork type angler, it, it would be a great book. It's got all the boat, it, it's got maps of the entire river. It shows you all the boat launches. It actually shows people how to tie hooks on. Really? It shows you all the rules and regulations. I'd like it to shows have that. You, I'm, I brought it for you. Oh, thank you. I brought it for you. It shows all the hot spots, uh, the different fishing holes that people use, uh, the common fishing holes. And it, it, it shows you the best distribution. Well, it shows you the distribution of fish and anglers, typically. Well, what, where so, do people get this? Do they call the office the over regional in office, we have them there. So just stop by, and we were trying to get them out to our vendors. Okay. And so, But here you go. Um, it's a pretty neat little book. It is a nice book. And um, it'll, it'll help you next time you go steelheading. Where's that picture, by the way, on the cover? That's up on the middle fork. Is it? I mean, not the middle fork, the, the main just outside of Chalice. You know, whoever did this book, it's a very well thought out booklet with graphs and charts and pictures and information. This is an excellent book. Well, thank you. Yeah, you good know. job. And it, yeah, it's it's one of those books that I think will be a, a very helpful to a lot of people. Shows you how to mark your, your tags. A lot of people don't understand that you have to 
cut the, the the piece out and then write on the on the tag the stretch of the river. Oh. It's got a code, you know, five or eleven section, okay. and then you ha- and how to fill everything out. It just gives you the w- basics on how to steelhead. You know, let's touch again on your Facebook new web page. You hit it earlier, but I think maybe you ought to hit it again. You know, if if you guys are interested on anything that's going on in the fishing game, um, we have this Facebook page that we put all our updates. We run YouTube videos on them. Uh, we put a lot of our press releases, all our public meetings. Um, if you're interested in knowing what's going on, we we post you know two or three things a week on it so that it keeps you up to date on on programs we're doing. I had some video of sage grouse dancing on there the other day. We had some video of elk. Um, we've had lots of different pieces of video on there. The, the, we're also coming. They're starting a new web page next uh, the first of next month. I've got to go to a meeting and we're going to kick these new web pages online. And it's just fishing game Magic Valley again. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anything that we put on that web page will go straight to our Facebook page. Then if you click on it, it'll take you back to the Facebook page, and it'll give you a calendar of all our events for just the Magic Valley region. So you don't have to battle through the big state website to figure out what's going on around here. There you go. Mr. Information. That's Nobody me. can That's replace me. him. Kelton Hatch. There you go. Stand by just a minute. I'll be right back. Don't forget your seven Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center. Seven of them serving you Absolutely, with the best in tires, and I mean the best in tires and the best in convenient credit. Many, many of their tires are on sale right now, like the Ultra Z900 for your cars. Oh, my goodness, all-season design, up to an 80,000-mile warranty, depending on your driving conditions. Check it out today at any of the seven locations, including all the custom wheels to really dress up your car, your pick up truck, along with brake value service. Oh, my goodness, they are the best in brake service, professionally trained technicians, and premium quality parts. Shocks and struts, front end alignments, and all your batteries. They've got batteries for every single need. Stop in and see them today. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, of course, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, the best. They really take care of you at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. We are going to wrap it up and put it back in the box. Any final words, my friend? You know, just remember your mothers on Mother's Day. There you go. Absolutely. And make sure you remember them while they're still here. Yeah, you take them fishing. Yeah, Absolutely. you bet. Uh, get out and do something fun with them. I really miss my mom. And, and uh, I, I hear urge you there. everybody to yeah. go out and celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, next month, what are we going to be talking about in May? we got 30 you know, seconds uh, left. You applying for deer tags. I will. And then also McGarver. And then I drew a bighorn sheep tag. There you that's go. My, my hope. I don't know that I did, but that's my my goal. Okay. And then of course McGargo will have an open invitation for me to go fishing. He might. I or doubt. be an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for a great program this morning. Hey, thank you. All right, Kelton Hatch, Idaho Fishing Game tomorrow on the program Thursday. We got a whole bunch of stuff to take care of tomorrow, and it's also Zeb's Lunch Bunch Day at Denny's Restaurant, six eleven Overland and Burley tomorrow at 11.30. We will see you there. Until tomorrow, remember, we start the program at 8.06, go to 11, and our motto is, the way things were are the way things ought to be. We will see you and yours tomorrow morning. God bless. Have a great day.